Tiffany, how are you? I'm not, okay, Paul. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Seeing that it's 6.30, I'd like to call this meeting to order and welcome to the Situate uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting for September 21st, 2010. Uh, the first issue I'd like to address is to uh, have an acceptance of our agenda that was duly posted. Move to accept. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, before we get to our first agenda item, which is to meet and um, uh, the applicants for Pier 44. I was just wondering if people are here for the agenda item number 10, which happens to be a discussion on the private waves, which I think probably some people are. Um, my intent is to start that discussion at 7.30 for an hour. Um, I only ask that because there are people in the halls, and I was going to say if you could, maybe you could take a stroll around the building here, maybe just outside, since it's nice weather before we get to the inclement weather, <coughs> so that we can meet with all the applicants, and then at 7.30 I will begin that agenda item. So um, if in the event that um, we uh, get to it at 7.15, I will not start it. I'll wait. I'll go to the other items out of order, but I will start it at 7.15. So if, if you don't mind... 7.30. I'm sorry, 7.30 rather, 7.30. I'll start at 7.30, okay? Thank you, folks. So other people who are here um, for the meeting, uh, the applicants, um, if you could, after these people walk out for a little while, if you can come on in. All right. Thank you. Come on in, folks. Watch your step. How you doing, Bob? All right. So now we're moving on to the next agenda item, which happens to be number three, which is to meet uh, the applicants for the Pier 44 Building Operation op Options and Feasibility Study Committee. And first on our list is Mr. Gordon Price. Mr. Price, if you could come on up. If you'd like to just briefly tell us your interest, why, you know, I know you've put it on your application, but just for the other board members and the edification of the audience. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to come in uh, this evening. Um, I consider it an honor to be uh, considered for the position. And, um, I've been situated for some 38 years. Uh, with the practice down in the harbor. Um, have served in a couple of similar study committees for the town over the years. The last one that comes to mind is the Front Street Committee, <coughs> uh, which we probably would rather not bring up again. Um, but uh, um, I think uh, the opportunity that the town presents itself with with the purchase of the Pier 44 property is an extremely um, uh, critical one for the town and an important one. Uh, I think my the thing that I can bring, I think, to the to the committee, which may be a little bit different than some of the other applicants, although I don't know all of them, is the fact that I do come in contact with a wide variety of people every day from infants to adults and uh, have opportunity to hear a lot of their needs and desires and goals. And there's been a lot of discussion in our office over the last few months about the, uh, the Pier 44 property. As you can see by the color of my hair, before too long I'll be uh, looking at probably the senior center myself, so um, I thought it would be worthwhile to put my name in as a potential applicant. So would be honored to see it. Questions from the board? Mm -hmm. okay. Just you. Qu quickly, what, what do you, you know, this committee is going to have seven people or so. What particular strength do you think you would bring to the committee as seven? You know, some people are architects and some people are yeah. building planners. Um, I Other think... I'm sorry, go ahead. Mr. McDonough, just the fact that, you know, I do come in contact with a wide variety of, of citizens of Situate every day and uh, would have an opportunity to discuss 
you know, options with them and things that would, would be the committee would be discussing and kind of get a, a range of, of ideas from different citizens uh, as to what, you know, they think they would like to see. Um, I, you know, I, I don't have any preconceived notions about what I would like to see. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think, you know, people need to come on to the committee with a, kind of an open mind. So. Um, I'm not a builder. I, I have built a couple of uh, mm -hmm. properties, but uh, that's not my forte. Um, I think just being in contact with a lot of people from around town. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Price. Thank you. Thanks. Moving on to the next, um, Lou Eister. And I hope I said the name right. Is Did. Mr. Eister here? Well, um, if we could move on to Mr. Fitzgerald. I thought I saw him. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald, come on up. And again, welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Again, Good if evening. you could give us just a brief reason why, Tim, you're interested and in, um, what expertise you could bring would be helpful for the board, aside from the information you provided, which everybody has. But, uh, okay. um, well, let's start with uh, I've worked on several boards for the town. I served on the bylaw review committee for several years. I was on the conservation commission for five years. I was chairman of it. Um, I know the sensitivity of the harbor. I am a building inspector for the town of Norwell, so I know building. I've been building for over 30 years. I have done active waterfront projects. Um, I have worked as a commercial estimator so I can keep the numbers in-house uh, within reason. Um, and I've built a lot of different things, and uh, I'd like to see something uh, that would, uh, that the whole town could enjoy there. I have no preconceived notions. Thank you. Mr. Harris. Has Norwell ever done, and obviously not waterfront, but have they done anything like this? Small waterfront. <laughs> really, they have I know, I know. Um, <laughs> Norwell done anything like this? As far since, as since you've been their building inspector? As far as? Town-owned facility and um, community, you know. Well, they rebuilt the schools, all that kind of stuff. The uh, schools and several of the town buildings, but they haven't, they haven't bought a building to use for the town. Okay. They've gone actually the other way several times. Just thought of it now. That's all right. Other questions? So is your, is your occupation or, or your, your background in building? Are you a builder? Yes, I've oh. built, I traveled around the country for 35 years. I built large projects. I ran, ran work. Right. Uh, did all kinds of, from superintendent to project manager, estimator. And is there any other expertise that you think you bring you know, strength that we may not know about, obviously building. Common sense. <laughs> um, a feel for situate. My family's been here as long as there's been a town, so. Great, thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you, Tim. You. Moving on, Mr. Peter Gately. Mr. Gately, please come on up. Mr. Gately, good evening. Yeah, um, I've been a, a part-time resident since I was born, and as of September the 1st, I'm now a full-time resident. Uh, I'm about to retire uh, in a few months, and I thought that uh, it was time I did something for the town, and this seemed to be an appropriate place. I um, built and managed a good-sized insurance agency. I have acquired over the years and 18-unit apartment building, built a couple of houses, uh, and about 10,000 square feet of office space in Randolph that I, I manage while running the other business. So well, my address is 27th Circuit Avenue, situate, 02066. Remember that sometimes, so. Uh, and uh, in terms of the building itself, uh, you've given an extensive charge in that uh, three or four page review and I think it's going to require quite a bit of effort and work and I think I'd be able to work with anybody else that might be involved. Thank you. Questions from the board? Just to g again, is there anything <coughs> out, of the, uh, out of the norm other than your business acumen that you think you would bring to this committee? I mean, and I'm just asking everyone the same question. Yeah, is there, no, that's is there fine. some little that's area of expertise or some sort well, of the, the building uh, and the business background, which I think you're going to need quite a bit of. And I mean, I mean I, asbestos, uh, you know, that thing is, you, you get a host of problems down there. 
And, and I don't say that asking for, so, you know, you can't have a committee with nine architects on it or, or seven builders on it. It's got to be diversified. And, I'm, you know, there's so many good applicants here that we're kind of, or I'm kind of digging to see, is there some, something in addition to what we see on the paper? So, and there's no right or wrong answers. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Gailey, you've mentioned asbestos and said that we have a whole host of problems down there. Upon what do you base that comment? I have no idea. I'm just listing potential problems that might come to my mind. I do not oh, know that there's okay. asbestos in the building or not. But okay, thanks. I, no, I just, had to sure. tear down a couple other buildings to build some other stuff and something sure. you have to be aware of. Yep. No, thank you for that clarification. Uh, Mr. Uh, just one quick question. On your uh, application, you have no pre preconceived ideas or thoughts that doesn't appear on I, going into the whole thing process. There's so many potential uses yeah. for it. Um, I would hope that you'd be able to do something in a public-private partnership that mm -hmm. would generate some revenue, uh, yeah. I, be it real retail or whatever. You be it, it, There's an awful lot to look at. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Mr. Gately, thank you very much. Moving on to our next, Mr. Stan Humphreys. Mr. Humphreys, could you please come forward? Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Um, I live at 40 Beaver Dam Road, about a five-minute walk Thank you. from the site. Um, I actually came up to Massachusetts right after the 78 blizzard. I came to live in situate um, in 79, so we're just over 31 years in town. Um, my background is in coastal geology. I served on the Conservation Commission for about 10 years, uh, the board of MACC for the following 10 after that. Um, I primarily work with uh, coastal wetland regulations, waterway regulations, and flood hazard management, FEMA mitigation um, approaches to post-disaster recovery. And um, I think that I would have a lot to offer, mainly from the environmental regulatory perspective, and um, restoring uh, natural conditions to sites in and around building areas. Questions from the board? Oh. I'm also Any questions? Yeah. Right. Mr. Humphreys, thank you then. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Ms. Uh, Young, Murray Young. Nancy Murray Young. Come on down. The Murray name is more important than the Young, I think. Yes, That's why you're right. there. Yeah. <laughs> no relation. Good evening. Thank you, Nancy. Good evening. Well, since I've already sent you about 20 pages of why I want to do this, um, <laughs> I will, um, I'll spare you the litany of how many committees and organizations I've been on, although I would like to, oh, sorry, Ann. Nancy Murray Young, 161 Captain Pierce Road. Thank you. Um, but just um, for those who don't know, who I am behind me. Um, as I mentioned in my application, I think I have a very unique position in this community in terms of the many ways in which I've been involved over the past <coughs> years. And um, from a business perspective, from the perspective of working on a number of committees within the town, having been a business owner, Having gone through the public schools, put my child through the schools, I now have a grandchild in Situate High School, um, and also having been a local reporter for a number of years, uh, so that I sat at the press table, covered most of the committees in town, and I've had a really interesting view of the development and the growth of the town. Uh, what I didn't, what I don't think I mentioned is, I don't think you're going to have a problem with people who understand buildings or environment or finance. But I believe, if I can answer Mr. Vignani's future question, that what I'm very much interested in is the process of making the decision, the ways in which the information is gathered the ways in which people's opinions are pulled together. Hold on, let Mr. Murray. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Murray. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
crowd everybody out here. Maybe, right? maybe if Nancy, you could speak a little more directly into the mic. Yeah, oh, that, okay. It, it helps a lot. Sorry. There we go. I'm so used to speaking loudly yeah. just, anyway. Just for the audience. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. I'll back. I'll just start again. The, the process oh, okay. is really of great interest to me. And that um, I do have a preconceived idea about what I want to see happen with that property, and that is that it is used for the greatest number of people, that it have um, application and accessibility to the largest number of constituencies in town within the guidelines of what we can do. And I also think that um, I'm interested really in the vision because we have not just an opportunity here, but a tremendous responsibility in how we utilize this property. It's probably one of the most exciting opportunities we're going to have. And as much as we have a great chance to do something wonderful, we also could kind of fall flat on our faces. I don't know if you want to hear that, but that's my, you know, that's my greatest um, vision for this property is that we make the most of what we have, that we make it really truly part of the community and that everyone who lives here feels an investment in it and an ownership in making sure that the project goes forward and goes forward well. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Questions from the board? She's already anticipated your question, yep. Mr. I'm going to ask everyone so you can. <laughs> you can ask me again. Save me the, uh... <laughs> Nancy, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, McHugh, come on up, Robert McHugh. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening, Bob. Hi, Bob. Pleasure to be here. And um, this is a very important thing for me. I've lived in town for almost 74 years, and I've done about everything you can do in this town good and bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying about I could have done better, not, not bad, excuse me. Um, I've served on the Waterways Commission. I, uh, I was, um, uh, well, why don't I start off with, I'm, not, I'm a veteran, United States Army. I worked as a chaplain's assistant. German American relations and other things. I had supervisory uh, position. I went to Georgetown University, the School of Business Administration. I'm a real estate broker. I had one of the first appraisal licenses given in the state of Massachusetts. Um, I am um, a graduate of the Massachusetts Association of Real estate boards, that's called the GRI. It's a very distinguished uh, rank that is given to realtors. I'm the past president and director of the Plymouth County Board of Realtors Multiple Listing. Um, my employment prior to that was United Mortgagee in North Miami, Florida, where I um, qualified properties, VFA, FHA type loans, and that sort of thing. And they were the largest in the, in the country at that time before they did an early belly up. Um, country Real Estate was my real estate company, and I was the owner, broker, and appraiser of that. I had four offices in Norwell, Cohasset, Situate, and Hanover, dealing in residential commercial properties, land and business sales, and land development did appraisals for banks, brokers, and individuals. Mortgage brokers for business builders, individuals, and builders. United States Government Small Business Administration. I was the chief loss verifier, the chief appraiser for the United States Business Association, and I was in charge of all of New England. I had 50 appraisers and staff. In, in that time. They wouldn't just keep us in New England. Uh, my people, because we're so good, they sent us to Hawaii and Texas and around the country so we got those things done. I worked for years with Catholic Charities. 
and doing their fundraisers. I was with Monsignor McNamara for 15 years, and we'd run a party, say, at the Oaks at Cohasset or Tom Flatley's house or the Maritime Academy or whatever, and I was responsible for making sure that they all went well. Um, so I had that kind of experience. Um, See, I see that from your resume, which is pretty impressive. Um, and so you're looking, you're looking, you believe based on all that background that you would be obviously very helpful for this, this committee and the members. I, I, I have always tried to give back to the community. I am presently, um, as you see on my resume, I'm also a, a member of St. Mary's, of course. I'm on the Waterways Commission. I was the chief usher at St. Mary's in Situate. I was on the board of trustees of Don Bosco. Um, belonged to the Plymouth County Sheriff's Association, the National Association of Real Estate Boards, Charitable Irish, Hadley Country Club, Clover Club of Boston, American Legion Post, Situ Situate, Post 144, GAR, Sons of the Union Veterans of the Civil War, Satua Camp 3188, and commander, I am the commander of the Sons of the American Legion. We're just starting this up, the Situate Squadron 144. Thank you. Uh, just I a few more because I have to move things on because okay. we've got other people, <laughs> Mr. McHugh. Right. Right. Let me just ask the other members, are there any sure. questions from the board? Well, I'll ask just quickly, what is the one thing that you're going to bring this committee, other than obviously your experience in real estate and everything, I think I could bring them together. I also think that if somebody doesn't move, I will do my best to inform you so that we get movers and we get this thing done right. And if I am put in a responsible position, I will rule with an iron hand and I will get things done. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McHugh. You're welcome. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thank you very much. Moving on to Colin McNeese. Mr. McNeese, could you please come forward? Good evening. Good evening. Thank, Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for your application. Uh, Just again, briefly. Sure. Uh, I'm a new resident to uh, Situate. I've been here about uh, a little more than a year. Uh, I was down in Rhode Island before that. I moved around a lot. And, uh, but my family and I decided we're looking for a community with good schools, you know, uh, a lot of good amenities. I grew up in the water down in Rhode Island. And we committed to this town last year, and I've fallen in love with it. And I've, I, I live in 94 Turner Road. I drive by this site almost daily. And f since I've been here, and actually before that, so I've looked at this property and thought, wow, this is really something that could be something better. Uh, it's been vacant since I've known it. Uh, I am a certified city planner. I was a professional planner before I went back to law school. I now work in public finance. Um, when I was uh, in planning, I was the chief planner up in Lowell, Massachusetts, uh, the director of economic development up there. Did a lot of similar tasks like this. Uh, was on, chaired and steered a lot of uh, feasibility studies uh, reuse committees, one for uh, senior center, others for judicial centers, uh, constantly trying to find reuse options for mill buildings, for artist loss and whatnot. Um, I just have, I have a passion for property. I mean, I see sites like this and, you know, the property geek comes out at me and says, you know, I want to get involved in this. And this was an ideal opportunity when I saw that the town, uh, frankly, surprisingly, uh, jumped on it and purchased the site. Um, so I think with my education and background, I can bring some technical expertise to it. But to answer your standing question, I think what I could, what I tend to be good at is bringing people together. In planning, you tend to be a jack of all trades, master of none. You know, I, I had a staff of engineers, architects, designers, and uh, I wasn't either of them. But I could bring them all together for a meeting, get them to discuss ideas, rein them back in when we might go off tangents and, uh, and move things forward, and uh, kind of get the best out of everybody. And, uh, that's what I hope to be able to bring to the table here, and I'm really hopeful and uh, looking forward to the opportunity to do that. Just, just one question, and that is that I see that you've looked for the Pier 44. There's another agenda item we're having uh, for the establishment or reestablishment of the Economic Development Committee. I, with your expertise, would you at least consider that as a, maybe another option, too, that could help the town? I, I don't know if you noticed that or not. but I, I didn't notice it on the agenda, but I did so notice it on the application when it said check open, the box if you'd be interested in other things. And I would be. I mean, again, this I saw this as an opportunity to get involved. I've been out of uh, planning and civic involvement for about you know five years now. 
and uh, <coughs> since we've been in situate, I'm excited to get back into that. And, uh, so. Love to see you again, Paul. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, other Thanks. questions from the board? Thank you. Can you answer mine? Thanks. Thank you, Thanks. Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Um, John Miller. Is John Miller here? Mr. Miller, thank you. If you come up. I'm, I'm J.D. Miller, uh, 313 Country Way. I'm a 20-plus year resident of Situate uh, and um, have been here with children going through all the schools. I run a, uh, a local business based here in Situate to provide home care for seniors. Um, I come as a generalist and with, um, with memories of going to the building for Easter brunches and things like that with my family. And um, I think we have a great opportunity to do something uh, that's positive, that's worthwhile, that defines the town. And um, and does provide a benefit for as many people as possible in the town with this opportunity, and um, so I'm here to put my hat in the ring and and potentially assist. Thank you. Questions from the board? I don't know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Miller. Brian Owens. Is Mr. Owens here? Thank you, Mr. Owens. Sure. Thank you. Um, so Ryan Owens, uh, 12 Holly Road. Um, as you can see from, uh, from my attached CV, uh, I'm a professor of government at Harvard. Um, I've got my PhD three years ago uh, in St. Louis, and prior to that I was a practicing attorney in uh, Madison, Wisconsin, uh, focused primarily on uh, real estate litigation and telecommunications litigation. Um, I, uh, I am also fairly new to Situate. I've been here for about two and a half years now. I have two young children in the public schools. Um, as far as what unique assets I bring here, um, uh, I, I would say two things. First, um, I, I have no dog in the fight. Uh, since I am new, um, I'm not really beholden to any particular way things have d been done in the past, um, sort of bring a, a, a fresh uh, side to things. Uh, and the other thing is that I've been trained both as a lawyer and as a social scientist with an emphasis on quantitative skills. Uh, to uh, tackle sort of unique phenomenon with uh, uh, theoretical insight and analytical insight. So uh, it seems to me this would be right in line with what I do on a daily basis, uh, approach a problem and try to analyze it as, as best I can. Thank you. Uh -huh. Questions from the board? Well put. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Amy Passini? She's not present. Okay. Fair enough. Um, Ms. Audrey Reedy. Ms. Reedy. Thank you, Mrs. Reedy. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. You all know that I do have a preconceived idea. My name is Lawrence Audrey Reedy. I am a master's prepared certified adult nurse practitioner with a specialty in gerontology. That rather leads to why you to understand I am on the board of the Senior Center, and I'm representing them. I have been at Situate greater than 50 years, six children educated in the Situate school system, and 16 grandchildren currently in the school system. So what I can foresee is a community center that can offer age groups, all of them, a place to go. When my children were in high school, there was a lot of talk about a community center. It never happened. Since I've lived here, there's been a lot of talk about a senior center, and it's never happened. There's a, in this town, there are 18,288 residents. There are 4,597 seniors, and we have a senior center that accommodates 40. It speaks for itself. We have an opportunity now to go forward with a multi-use center that will accommodate larger numbers of people. I would like to be a member of this committee. Thank you for your attention and your consideration. Thank you, Mrs. Reedy. Questions from the board? Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I'm a builder of relationships. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Stuart Rosen. Mr. Rosen. 
Come on down. Good evening. Good evening. Stuart Rosen, 83 Crescent Ave. I grew up in Randolph. I brought my kids up in Norwell and moved to Situate three years ago and built a house up on uh, Second Cliff. There's nothing finer than this town. This is, this is the euphoria. This is the most amazing place that anybody could ever live. And I've got a spot up on Second Cliff, as Rick knows, that is just the most gorgeous place in the world that I'm going to die in this house because it's just so cool. The reason Hopefully I'm in... Hopefully not for a long time. Easy. <laughs> <Okay>. Just <laughs> want to make sure we're clear on that. A long time from now. <laughs> the, the reason that I'm here is that it's time for me to do something for this town. This town has been so good to me and has blessed me with what I've got. So it's time for me to give something back. My qualifications are I'm in retail. I have a bunch of businesses and employ about 100 people. So I'm essentially the people person of the group. I can do things. I can motivate people. I can talk to people. I can hopefully build groups and build relationships. I walk by. I ride by. Um, I'm, a, I'm a boater. I've got a boat in the harbor. I've had a boat in the harbor for 15 years. So I'm very familiar with the territory and with the project. And I think I can be a tremendous asset. Thank you. Questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Rosen. Okay, guys. Thank you. Andrew uh, Rosano? Rosano. Rosano. I apologize. Mr. Rosano. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. I appreciate the opportunity to address the board. Uh, I live at 57 Highland Crossing in the West End. I've lived there for going on 20 years. I've been a volunteer for other committees, but I thought that this was an exceptional opportunity and I really wanted to give something back to the town. Um, I'm a director of sales for a printing company. I've been involved in printing and publishing my whole professional life. Uh, my family and I enjoy the harbor. We own a boat. We, uh, we love to walk the harbor. And I think the uh, Pier 44 property is an exceptional opportunity for the town. And I think it's uh, something that will affect future generations um, for a, a long time, I hope. I also think that the, uh, the project faces exceptional challenges. Um, I think we're all under uh, budget constraints personally and, and as a town. And while I don't have any preconceived ideas, I think that there needs to be a way to do this with the least impact on taxpayers, with the most uh, opportunity for, uh, for use for the town. So I really don't have any pre preconceived ideas. I think I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a good listener. I, uh, been on boards and, and worked with groups uh, my whole life, and I think this is a, I think it's a, an interesting project, and I think it, um, it really got me excited and made me want to give something back to the town after all these years. Thank you. So, and what do I offer that's unique? Um, well, two things, large and small. One is I travel a lot in my job, and I've seen a lot of towns, big and small, and what they've done to their harbors uh, or their waterways. I think um, there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. I think this town has charm unlike any town in New England. I think there's a tremendous aesthetic opportunity to do something that makes sense for the town and that, that will make uh, the town's people proud of the, the development. On a, on a lesser note, uh, as I said, I've been in book publishing and printing my whole life, so I write very well, and if there's a report to be written, I can do it. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Always a good skill. Other questions from the board? Just, Mr. Harris. <coughs> just do you think your travel might interfere with meetings if, these, if this committee were to meet? I don't think so. I, you know, I coach youth hockey, and I'm able to plan around that. Um, you know, my travel is far enough down the road that I can schedule around. I've been okay. doing it for 20 years. And All right, great. My boss never knows when I have something planned, so it, it works pretty well. <laughs> Hopefully he's not watching Channel 10. <laughs> <laughs> I'll guarantee you he is. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jan Daniel Bruder? <coughs> a writer, I'm sorry. Thank you. Dan Ryder, 23 Jericho Road. I'm about a sand wedge from the site. Um, and uh, give you a little bit of my history and involving the site. Um, I, uh, I took some notes because I knew I'd be nervous. It's all right. <laughs> I had been uh, involved in all the previous open meetings on this parcel as we tried our best to steer the developer toward a reasonable proposal. From the first zoning board meeting, when I commented, had a building of this size and scope existed in the 1800s, the Bates girls never would have known the British were coming. Uh, at the final meeting, I put a face on the proposal, proposed building, 
comparing it to central school building the proposed condos would have been longer deeper taller than the central school building visually filling the entire lot i think it's important as far as possibilities for the site to explore you know new commerce uses for the waterfront as in tourism possibly an aquarium or marine park and again i have no preconceived you know set thing for this this site i also my first inclination was to do something for the seniors but i'm also wary of the fact that you know there is a lot in town that's designated for that and it's you know it's high time we move on that but that is also could be a separate issue may not necessarily be uh, I've discussed with Phil Benita sign the mechanical and structural condition of the pier building. Um, <clears throat> in my opinion, its days are numbered. And uh, I think, as far as a vision for the site, I think uh, the fact that if we had to tear it down and build something new, uh, it would require incorporating the 100 year floodplain. And I think that would actually help us achieve a raised structure and uh, and again I don't want to put the, the cart before the horse and any architect will tell you you got to come up with a use for the building before you design it but I, I do have a vision for it and it's 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 on a, obviously a much smaller scale but uh, the Boston Harbor Hotel uh, with the arch perhaps in a uh, Nantucket shingle style though and um, you know, borrowing architecturally from Lawson Tower uh, with some turrets and curves and, you know, do a really nice building there. Uh, I think it would, you know, and I, I also am a uh, social vocational technical school alumnus and would pursue their possible involvement in um, design and building to save the town money. And basically, to your point, Mr. Big Nine, uh, my strengths, I think, are having an open mind, thinking outside the box, and a willingness to work with others for the good of the town to build something we can all be proud of. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. You. Ryder. Thanks. Questions? <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Ryder. Thank you. Susan Ryan? You an O apostrophe would go a lot easier. <laughs> good evening, Susan. Good evening. Susan Ryan, 516 First Parish Road. I've lived in Situate for more years than I really would like to admit to, but it's been about 40 years. My husband has lived in Situate much longer. Um, we've owned several properties in Situate and absolutely love it. My extended family lives here in Situate, goes through the uh, Situate Public Schools. As most of you know, who know me, I am a lawyer. I have a business. My practice is in Abington. There's um, nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with being a lawyer, even a divorce lawyer. Um, <laughs> I have served uh, at the town on the Council on Aging for about six years, and I was on the feasibility study uh, group. I don't want to be known as the person who was on the feasibility or as the chair of the Council on Aging because I think I'm, I have a lot more that I bring to the committee. I taught school in the city of Newton where I commuted from Situate to Newton because I love Situate uh, for a number of years and I also sold real estate. Uh, here in Situate and Cohasset. So I have a, a well-versed uh, information about the town um, and as a business owner and as an educator I think I'm pretty well rounded. I don't have any preconceived notions. I just know that they don't make ocean views and ocean property. We've got what we've got and we need to take a look at it. I intend to live in Situate a whole lot longer and I want it to be something that we can look at with pride. I think I bring a lot or would bring a lot to the committee. I'm active in the Bar Association, the Plymouth County Bar. I tend to be a very creative and innovative person. Um, 
and I like to organize, and I think that that's one of the skills that I have in addition to my legal skills. I think that I would, um, I, I think I'm not necessarily just an adversarial person, but I think I'm a consensus builder as well, and I look to find answers to questions, and I think that we probably have a lot of questions that need to be answered. So I would welcome the opportunity to be involved. I haven't been involved in a committee for quite some time, and I do feel a responsibility to the town to give back so much that I have received. Thank you. Questions? Thank you, sir. No? No? no. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Summers, Ben Summers. Thank you for including me on your list of applicants. I have also been a resident of Situate for 38 years. I chose the town because my office is at Queen Anne's Corner in Norwell. I'm an editor at the New England Real Estate Journal. We cover commercial, industrial, mortgage finance, and municipal construction and development all over the region. Um, this is the first time I have had a chance to uh, apply for uh, a board uh, to be appointed. Where I used to live, <coughs> I uh, tried to get elected to library trustee and planning board, but that didn't work out. Uh, I have covered the Board of Selectmen meeting before any five of you who were members of the Board of Selectmen when the late Dr. Greenblatt published the Situate Mirror. Some of you may remember that publication. And uh, I'm always interested in what goes on in the town. And uh, other, other than that, uh, you, you know, to answer your question, I'm just interested in the town and where it's going. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Questions from the board? No. Thank you, Ben. No. Thank you, Mr. Summers. Yep. Thank you, Ben. Mr. Ted Tobin. Thank you, Mr. Tobin. Thank you for having me. I'm Ted Tobin. I live at 21 Gannett Road. Um, I'm a uh, third generation. My wife is third generation in Situate. Uh, I'm also a uh, real estate developer, and I've done, uh, done a fair amount of work, uh, not in Situate. I've done uh, projects in, uh, in Somerville, uh, Marblehead, Hopkinton, and, um, and I, I do a you know, wide variety of d different types of projects. A lot of them uh, have a residential component. A lot of them are 21E components. Chapter 91 um, is a project I've recently done in Marblehead. Um, the reason I'm, I'm here is because, you know, again, I'm third generation in in Situate, I've known the property for for an awful uh, long time, and I, I think it's a it's a great <coughs> opportunity. I didn't want to see what was uh, originally proposed there. I'd love to see something great happen with it. I don't have any pre, uh, conceived notions about what should go on there, but I think it's a it's a good opportunity. I think the important thing is to really listen to a lot of different ideas because you know you don't want to you don't want to mess this one up. I th I believe um, you know strengths I bring are uh, consensus consensus building. Uh, I've worked. Um, I've ha I have done a 40B, uh, but it was a friendly 40B, and I worked closely with the town. I've done uh, rezoning of properties that I thought made sense, and I was able to get consensus from neighbors and from board members um, to head in my direction and say, hey, I think this makes some sense, and I was able to get buy-in from towns and, and, um, and other citizens. Um, you know, particularly this, you know, this property, I, I, I don't really have a, a you know, a, a a great idea, but I, I think by listening to a lot of the people, the board members, um, just reading just all the blogs and what people have had to write about it, everyone seems to have a, a notion of what would be best there, and I'm sure, you know, maybe a, something simple as a park might be a great idea, a small restaurant or uh, a public-private partnership. I, um, I recently did speak at MIT for a, uh, doing public-private partnerships. I recently was awarded a half a, half a million dollars for, uh, for doing a public-private partnership, extending a bike path uh, along an MBTA station. So I know a little bit about that process and trying to work with others. Um, I've got a master's in finance from Boston College. Um, 
I'm not sure what. Thank you. Thank you. Questions from the board? Thank you, Ted. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks guys. Finally, Jonathan Warner. Good evening, Mr. Warner. Welcome. Thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Chairman and Board of Selectmen. I uh, feel humbled by the competition behind me, <laughs> having listened to many of them. Uh, I, my family and I have resided at 50 Brook Street in Situate Harbor uh, for the last 15 years. I also enjoy sailing in the harbor. I have a uh, sailboat in the harbor, so I understand the harbor also from that perspective. Uh, I have a graduate degree in city planning from MIT. Uh, I was a former chairman and member of the planning board. Um, I have a, about 20 years of experience in planning for a international planning company. I'm also a certified general appraiser, so I understand highest and best use analysis for property. And I've done a lot, uh, quite a bit of uh, studying uh, and evaluation of uh, waterfront properties. Uh, so I feel that I bring a lot of skills to the table. But what I think is most important and most challenging is really getting the community together and getting them to express what they think is you know in the best interest of the town and what they'd like to see here and then being able to uh, interpret that into a reasonable use you know that it's realistic and uh, benefits the community to the greatest degree so I, I would uh, uh, really love the opportunity to to help you thank you questions from the board a quick question thank you, Mr. Your last line of your response here says uh, your ri a written report will include building and site design and a financing and implementation plan. Yeah. And tell me a little more about your ideas about what scale of a financing plan you would you would envision this committee coming up with. Yeah. Yeah, that's I got that from your RFP, I guess, yeah. and um, it depends upon the use. You know, if it's going to be a park with a with a small seasonal restaurant. Uh, that would be one type of financing plan, but uh, I guess really it, it, uh, it depends upon what use you have, you know. Um. Nope, that's fine. That's good. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Okay. Pleasure. That Thank concludes you. our, um, I know we got to get to Jane and, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I just thought if you would ask if Mr. Eister had Oh, yeah. Arrived. Is Lou Eister here? No, that's a good idea. I well, I tell you what. I'll tell you what we'll do. Table for three. We'll probably move on. <laughs> we'll move on. If Mr. Eister's here, then we'll talk to him later on in our meeting. Um, just that concludes our applications, with the exception of Mr. Eister, if uh, he's still here. I just want everybody to understand that um, this is not going to be an easy process for all of us, for the people who are watching, the people who are here, and the people who watched the last uh, meeting. Uh, there are a lot of qualified people for various reasons, and the decision is going to be extremely hard. Um, and I'm, while I'm sure I probably speak for the board, we're up to the task. It's, it's very hard to narrow it down to seven or nine people um, with so many qualified people. Um, so I just want to say that um, I thank all the applicants who came before us to talk to us, share with it, not just with us, but everybody in the audience and, and also on TV. Um, our next meeting will end up voting. It's not happening tonight, but we'll vote, excuse me, we'll vote on the uh, committee for next uh, meeting, which is October 5th. So having concluded that, I'd like to move on. Um, I'm going to ask the board if it's okay with the board. I'd like to take a few things out of order, um, one of which would be to go with Kevin Cafferty on the, um, I think it's discussion item eight number and eight and also uh, nine, although I also wanted to go to the um, uh, seven, which is the bond anticipation. Of. Let me start with seven first, if that's okay with the board. Sure. Great idea. So I'd like to move to discussion item number seven, which is a vote. John. Jean. Kim had something she was going to. Sorry, folks. We're just going to close these doors because okay. this is kind of quite noisy outside. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure, we'll hit those quickly then, okay? Folks, we, we haven't started the uh, discussion to the private ways yet, so if you're, if you're here for the private ways, I can only ask if you can wait just a little bit longer out in the hall. That would be greatly appreciated. Um, oh, Jane. Right. Okay. So... If 
I could ask just uh, folks. Yeah. All right. There are a lot of people in the hall, people, so that's what we're trying to do is accommodate the small nature of our hearing room here. Um, John, if I could uh, ask you to, uh, we're going to start with agenda item number seven right now. I'm taking things out of order. It's a discussion vote, bond anticipation note, Treasurer Collector Jane Lepardo. Ms. Lepardo. Um, actually, um, these are four interfund advance borrowings. I haven't done the BN as of yet. Um, Kevin Cafferty is working on several water main projects simultaneously, Stockbridge Road, Tilden Road, Country Way, and then... Um, I believe it's Hollett Street for the fourth one. So what I'm doing is what I've done in the past is just borrow on paper really from ourselves um, until I do a little bit later on this fall when I need some of the bigger money for them when I do the formal um, bond anticipation note. So I need you to uh, vote to approve these and then I'll send a copy into the Department of Revenue and to a uh, fiscal advisor. And when I do the bond anticipation note, then these will be wiped clean. Okay. Questions from the board? We did something similar a while ago, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. I've been doing them um, to we save a little bit in interest costs and yeah. in borrowing costs. Sure. So as long as it's not too large a sum, we're borrowing against the stabilization fund, which has $2 million in it. So what is the uh, total? Is it the 297 or the 537 that are the total amount for the four projects? Um, I didn't total. Or is it the, oh, I'm sorry, it's the 170. The yes, 21, right. the 180, right. and the 165. Yeah, I have to do it by authorization D. at town meeting. So so that's a, why you have four. Yeah. So it's the 530 30 ish. 180, 22, 537, 061. It's okay, the 537, so, 061, right? So that's just the advance times four or just not times four? It's the total. No, just the, the one. Total. Just the one. It's the total. Yeah. Motion, Mr. Chair? If, uh, other questions? Oh, good. Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to interfund advance borrow for four water main projects per the recommendation of the Treasurer Collector. Second. 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 Discussion? Any questions from the audience? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Jane, thank you. Um, if I could go, I'm taking things out of order just to try to move things along briefly. Discussion uh, number five. Discussion vote new drain, laner, drain layers license. Yes, Please come on up and have a seat quickly. Jerry Richmond. Mr. Richmond, you're looking to get a uh, drain layers license. That is correct, sir. And um, you've provided the town with all the insurance. Uh, insurance, yes. you know, you're insured and you're insurance currently insured. To bond. To bond and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like, are you doing a project right now? Is that what you're proposed? That you're uh, doing? We're in anticipation of this project, yes. Questions from the board? Have you had one in situate before? We have not, no. Where have you had them? We've had one in Plymouth. Uh, we do a lot of work down home. Um, we have a big client that has a project up here that we're accommodating her, so that's why we're here before you tonight. A residential? Yes. Okay. One motion? Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a drain layers license to Jeremiah Richmond, DBA Richmond Sand and Gravel, Inc., 70, uh, 70 Minuteman Lane, Plymouth, Massachusetts. Second. Seconded by Mr. Murray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very Thank much, you. Mr. Richmond. Okay. Um, any walk-ins? Seeing none, that's uh, agenda item number four. Um, moving on to agenda item number uh, six. Six. Mr. Cafferty? Uh, no, no, no. Hawker Peddler. Oh, Hawker Peddler, actually. I'm sorry. Number six. Sorry, Kevin. Is there a Hawker Peddler on uh, number six? Good evening, folks. Good to see you again. How are you? I see that you have JP's Hot Dog Express. It's actually at the uh, lighthouse right there in the parking lot. You had a um, Hawker Peddler's license that expired as of, uh, I guess you could say, Labor Day as it ended. Yep. And tonight you're seeking to um, continue that until when? Oh, the end of October. 10th of October. Yeah. Okay. Um, questions from the board? Is this, do you only have the one stand? Yeah. And you're the one that's down in... Right. And uh, all you're asking is just an extension of the date, not a change of anything else? There would be one other amendment on the hours. If we could extend the hours past um, 4 p.m. in the afternoon. The reason why I asked that is Thursday night the, the uh, car club is in there. It's a great crowd. 
but those guys don't arrive till around six o'clock and they usually leave around sunset so you know, taking that into consideration uh, we'd like to extend the hours to seven o'clock yeah something like that in the summer because we're going to renew the license for next year do we have the cutoff time say nine o'clock or something like that because it stays lighter. We'll, we'll address that next year when you come back because we have to do it on an annual basis. But right. um, for, for purposes of this evening, you're looking to extend it at least till 7 o'clock in the evenings. Yeah. Is that I, every, I'm a little concerned about that aspect of it, if I may. Um, it's a residential neighborhood. Sunset's getting earlier at this time of year. Correct. So just because it's a residential neighborhood, I, that's, my only, that's my only hesitation. At all, I completely understand. There's events there that you want to capture, and I support that notion. But what about the seven on on Thursday? Yeah, yeah. We'll just for that one day only. I'm fine with that. Work. That work. The neighborhood has been awesome, also. Sure. Uh, in yeah. The support and all the people yeah. and the, the kids and everything. We've had uh, a great response to what we're doing there from a lot of people. It's been a uh, very good, uh, positive thing. You live at seven o'clock Thursday night. Excuse me, sir. Seven o'clock Thursday Just night Thursdays, for the or? auto show, I, yeah, and see, then we'll deal with next year, next year. Yeah, right now we may do some weekends out there. It isn't. We're not going to be out there on the basis that we have been all summer. Yeah. But some of the guys there in the club and other people in the neighborhood and other working men there in the in that area, you know, have been coming mm -hmm. there, and I've been telling them that uh, could probably stick around a little bit longer. And thanks to gentlemen, now we'll be able to do that. Oh. Is there any noise? I mean, you don't. Play music. There's no. No, 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 no. Yeah. So. No, nothing like that. What do you think? That's just my. I tell you what. what it's just my thought. What if we did it? Do we have a meeting in two weeks? Yes. And then if someone complained, we could revisit it in two weeks or no? I mean, I don't think there's any. We're only talking why. four weeks. I, I mean, was going to say what we could do is do it to the end of October, and then if it becomes a problem, we'll hear about it next year, and then right. we can address it then. Yeah. If that works. Just regular extend it to seven until. Until the end, the end of October, October 31st, and then okay. if it becomes a problem, we'll um, we'll have to address the issue next year. If that okay. works. I just wanted to raise the subject. You want oh, a motion? That's about, please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the request of JP's Hot Dog Express to amend their current license to include a new expiration date of October 31st, 2010, and to extend the hours to sell hot dogs in the vicinity of Lighthouse Point to be from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Um, discussion? Seeing none. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Very you. good, folks. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Um, moving on to agenda item number eight. Mr. Uh, wasn't there one other that? If no, we got it. Um, the renewer? Okay, I'll tell you what. Why don't we do this? Can we go to agenda item number 15, which is a vote to drain layer license renewal? Lind? Could you please come up? Sure. Thanks. <coughs> so, going to that, you are looking for a uh, drain layers license, um, and you've submitted your insurance. Yeah, I said it. Checked it's off. Submitted. Yeah. And uh, obviously, you're looking to do some work. Yeah, I have a project lined up. I had my license last year, and I'm just asking to renew it at this time. So submitted the paperwork. And okay, so you had it last year, but you didn't renew it this year because you didn't have a project in town. That's right. And, that, That's and right. what is your project? Um, it's um, at the corner of First Parish Road and uh, Cedarwood Road. A residential house? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Connection. All right. Other questions from the board? Motion. Motion, please. Move the board select and vote to renew the drain layer license for Stephen Lynn doing business as site and utility services company, Greenbush, Mass. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Um, discussion? Questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Lynn, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Cafferty, would you mind coming down for agenda items number eight and number nine? And then we'll get to agenda item number ten. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> um, actually, I had agenda number eight and nine, I believe. Yep. Um, the first one is to a water contract for the CND disposal for the transfer station. Um, we put out some information, started 
shopping that. And we, uh, Kevin, could you do, I'm sorry to interrupt, could you pull that mic over a little closer? Certainly. The, Any better? Thank you. How's that, John? Thanks, Kevin. The Department of Public Works requests the contract be awarded to New England Recycling Company of Taunton, Mass., for the value of $174,960. This contract is for the hauling and disposal of C&D waste from the transfer station and has a duration of one year, which can be renewed up for a total of three years. Um, basically, what we did is our contract was expiring with the current waste um, hauler, and we renegotiated. We we put it out, got some other prices, and uh, we received a pretty reasonable um, rate that we were kind of pleased with, and uh, we're interested in signing a, a year contract. It'll be a savings to the town. Um, currently, we're paying about $90 a ton um, to haul the material, about $89 to $90, I think, and this new rate will be about $72.90 per ton. So um, on last year, we hauled out, I think, 2,400 tons of material, so it'll be a decent savings. Substantial. Motion, Mr. Chairman? Actually, just one quick comment, if I could. Yes, Mr. You Mayor. just said it's a decent savings. Could you please elaborate? I mean, right in front of us, I just want people to know what good work these gentlemen are doing because their savings are $41,000 a year by renegotiating this and putting this forward. You're too bashful there, Kevin. <laughs> decent savings might mean something to some people. I just want people to know it's $41,000 real money that these guys just saved us. And when would it go in effect? Immediately. Immediately. And it was a new company? No. It's actually the same company. Same company. Yeah. Which is better at negotiating. And it's, um, well, it's it's not subject to 30B because it's trash hauling technically. So what we did is we shopped. I gave you guys the package of what we did. We threatened to put it out on a public bid, and we picked, we shortlisted three guys that had good records and gave them, uh, gave them that package and let them bid on it. So um, they were very aggressive. So we were pretty happy with it. Okay. Motion, please. Move the Board of Selectmen award the contract for the disposal of construction and demolition debris to, to New England's recycling company of Taunton, Mass., for the amount of $174,960. Second. Second by Mr. Discussion. Harris. Discussion. Kevin, we're going to pay seventy-two ninety a ton. The fact that we voted $174,000 doesn't mean that that's what they get. They're getting seventy-two ninety a ton. Seventy-two ninety a ton, whatever we deliver them. It's not a it's not a lump sum for for um, one seventy-four. One seventy-four. That's that's an estimate, and in the contract that I wrote up, it says it depends on the unit prices and could increase or decrease depending on how much we took out. Good. That's a ballpark value just for a contract. If we go over the unit price, we'd you know we'd amend it at that point. All right. That's it. Thanks. Any other discussion? Any questions from the audience? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you, Kevin. Moving on to agenda item number nine. Discussion vote, amend the contract for installation of additional 12-inch ductile iron water line on Tilden Road. Yes. Um, the town has awarded a contract to CC Construction to install water line on Tilden and Stockbridge Roads for $1,290,922. This is replacing some of the old line that's causing a lot of the brown water that we're experiencing. Um, when the project is complete in the current phase, there'll be a section of unlined pipe about 1,990 feet. What we'd like to do with this change order, um, the prices came in very reasonable. We would like to extend the unit using the unit prices in the contract to complete um, the pipe and remove this uh, old dirty pipe and uh, clean up the system. So you're going to do an additional 2,000 feet of pipe? Correct. And Where's the money coming from that? Is it in the initial? It's not in the initial. We, this year, with the increase in rates, we, um, in town meeting voted, we were able to get an extra $1.3 towards waterline improvements. Right. So what we're going to do is take some of that money and put it towards this um, to remove that. That's take all of it, right? Is that the total? The 2,000 feet is going to cost $1.3 No, the 2,000 feet is for this change order, which is 190000 Oh, oh, I see. The total cost already is 1.3. So this will be a project that's in this fiscal year's it's allocation. Right now, where they're working down Tilden Road, what we're looking at is we've got a section of unlined pipe that we know we have to replace. We could replace it next year, but we've already got the whole area disturbed. We have the money to do it. We're impacting the schools. We want to get out of there and, and walk away from it. So and we'll you save on having to remobilize. And twice. the unit price we have is very reasonable. It saves a remobilization, and it saves, um, you know, designer costs it, it's it saves a 
pretty good amount of money just to get it out of the way Ms. now. Mr. Harris. Kevin, first of all, who was the engineer that decided that we shouldn't do this in the beginning? This was done a while ago. All right. um, the plans were put out, I think it was like three years ago, our, our, the original engineering contract two or three years ago. Um, and it was based on the amount of money that, that they had at that time to do as much as they could. Okay. Now we have uh, some excess money, so while we're out there, we might as well take advantage of it. So if we were to figure out what they <clears throat> did the original contract for, and then we did, made, added this change order, it's still the same unit? This is all using the cost same, per foot? This is the same cost per foot that mm -hmm. we're paying on the contract that we put out now. So mm -hmm. we talked. I talked to the contractor. They're willing to go by the unit price and and carry the job out. So it'd be a complete unit price of one went out to bid publicly. So often you have change orders and that's where we could really get taken advantage of, but that doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. No, not at all, because price. because we get a very competitive price for doing the work on Tilden Road. Right. Um, very competitive. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pay the same price to do but this other 1,900 feet. How are they, I'm sorry, how are they doing now? They seem to be moving right along. They're, they're moving along. It's um, it's tough with the buses because they, they make openings for the buses to get by every day and, right. and um, people to get in and out of there. So they're, right. they're impacted in the morning and they're impacted in the afternoon. Right. Okay. So, um, but it's working out okay so far. Good. Okay, good. Motion, Mr. Chairman. Please. Uh, move, move the Board of Selectmen uh, vote to award a contract amendment for the installation of 2,000 feet of 12-inch water main on Tilden Road to CC construction for an amount not to exceed $190,000. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none. Any questions? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Want to stick around well, for next stuff? That's going to bring us to the next agenda item. So before we open up the doors, folks, uh, for those people who are here, I kind of want to start setting some ground rules because we have a lot of people. So uh, this is a discussion on private ways. It's agenda item number 10. We're going to tell these people in just one second. Um, but before we do, um, if you are not here for that agenda item and want to listen, I can only ask politely if you could stand in the hall because there are a lot of people who are out there who do want to come in here and listen to it. Um, for those people who are not going to be able to come in, um, and I'm going to explain it to the people because I'm going to have them open up the doors. I'm going to have people, if they have questions, to come in. We have over 125 people here, and as you can tell from the room, we don't have 125 seats. So I ask your indulgences, and I'm, gonna, and I'm not trying to preclude the people outside because I'm going to say the same thing. But if you have questions, I ask that you uh, respect the decorum. You raise your hand. I'm the chair. I'll ask you. First, we're going to have a discussion from the board. And I will ask people to provide questions, and we'll try to provide answers. I also ask the people who are here, you know, I'm not asking to, I hope people don't ask the same question or expect, you know, the same response. I'd like to try to do this expeditiously. So having said that, if you could open up the doors, because I don't know if they're going to hear me or not. So. <laughs> If anybody's leaving. All right. Is anybody leaving? You could probably leave right now, okay? All right. So if, if somebody in the back could open up the door, I'd appreciate that. Right. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I'll find out. All right. Tricia, did you see the chief judge or chief uh, Stewart? I saw chief judge and chief Stewart. I saw chief judge out there somewhere. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you could please keep quiet. There's not enough room in this, this room here, but I'm asking that you open up the doors so that people can hear us in the hall. And for those people who are in the hall, I'm John Danahy. I'm the chair of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, as you can tell, we have... Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, we do not have microphones out in the hallway. So everybody has to be very quiet in order for the people who are in the hallway to hear us. I will ask that we, the board members, speak up and do the best we can to kind of broadcast for those people who are in the hallway. Now, I understand we have over 125 people here. 
And as you know, we don't have 125 seats in this room. So I'm asking you to keep discussion at a minimum. And frankly, actually, discussion out in the hallway, I really would appreciate it if you didn't say anything because the people in the hall can't probably hear over your voices and uh, what's going on in here. Now, obviously we're here on a discussion on private ways. There's a lot of people here and a lot of people are going to want to say something. Uh, I'm going to tell you the ground rules as the chair. Uh, the chair, you have to raise your hand to ask a question. For those people who are in the hallway, obviously I cannot see your hands. So I'm going to ask the courtesy of people who have asked questions if you would so remove yourself so that other people in the hallway would have the opportunity to come forward to ask questions. So that way we can at least get to everybody who has questions and try to get you some answers. Um, the other thing is, is that, uh, you know, we can respectfully disagree. I'm not going to tolerate arguments. I'm not going to tolerate people speaking over other people. Um, respect the comments of your neighbors, respect the comments of the town officials, as well as the town employees. Now, having said that, I welcome you. I'm 10 minutes late. I apologize, but let's get started on the discussion. And um, the discussion obviously is on public or private ways, rather. And before us, I see Mrs. Joyce. Welcome again, and thank you very much. I did forget your name, sir. Larry Toski. Larry Toski, okay. And um, other question I have before we go is, I need your addresses for the purposes of this, this uh, discussion. Uh, Mrs. Joyce, I believe you were at, um, I forgot the address. 25 Ocean Front Street in Humrock. Okay. And 7 Ocean Front Street, Humrock. Okay. Thank you very much. As you know um, from the last discussion, we were unable to talk about it due to the public meeting. Uh, tonight we can. It's been duly noticed. So. As you also know, I believe um, there has been a memorandum that has been submitted by Albert Bangert, who is the head of the Department of Public Works, uh, dated September 10th. Uh, it was a memorandum that was pretty succinct to the point as to why the town has decided and has legally is not permitted to deal with private ways. So. Obviously, we need to have a discussion on that. It doesn't impact just you only. It impacts the citizens of Situate all over the town. And it, just so that everybody understands, there are over 186 private roads or private ways that are impacted by this. So I'll be happy to. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Murray. i just also like to point out, uh, as Mr. Danny, he nicely said, you know, we now are able to discuss this in public and so on, and so we're prepared as well to make sure we can answer your questions as fully as possible. We have Mr. Jim, James Toomey here representing town council, and there's various other departments represented as well. So, um, you know, it's one thing to read stuff that's written down by a lawyer, and it's another thing to actually have it here. So um, we're all here to have a good discussion. If I could start just briefly, um, I wanted to see if I could clarify actually the agenda itself this evening as it is. When we were here on the 21st, we were here as residents of South Hamarok, um, namely Ocean Front Street, Dreamway, and Old Mouth Road. Uh, we had asked specifically for an agenda, um, to be on the agenda for just those streets for us, and now the agenda is, is for the entire town. Could you give us a clarification on that? Should we just... It's simply because the issue that you raise is impacted not just by that region alone, it's across the town. So, you know, to discuss it only in, the, in a... Um, um, microscope would be unfair because there are other people in the community who've raised the same issue and so we want to address it straightforward so people not just in uh, Hummer Rock but people in the West End or people in North Situate or in Greenbush or in Sand Hills or Egypt it's, it's equitable here I understand we okay. again we wanted to just clarify sure. that and uh, we feel we have a unique situation but we'll get into that a little later on um, my question is, again, the town says that they're legally uh, bound not to do the roads. Is that correct? Is that what you're saying? And you're saying with the roads, you're saying uh, the, so you, again, what issue are we talking about? To maintain the private. Um, I just I need a little clarification on that. I just don't understand how. I mean, you've been doing this for 60 years, and, you know, with, um, you know, with, um, you guys have that um, section 30610 where the town adopted that a while back, which say the town may do that at their discretion, maybe not. 
as I understand the bylaws or as I understand you know what's going on here is that the town ha is uh, able to do it or not do it at its own discretion concerning funding concerning other uh, different situations I just didn't see anywhere um, not that I'm a lawyer but I didn't see anywhere where the town was um, doing this illegally mr. Murray just seeking clarification are we talking about plowing or maintenance, maintenance. And, I, and I want to make sure we keep the two separate um, or not or things. not but I, I just want to make sure what your specific question is about I think we're more concerned at this point with maintenance okay, okay. Um, but of course plowing plowing is very important from a health and safety standard as well to okay. uh, you know, allow safety vehicles emergency vehicles to get in and out of the roads just as uh, the maintenance is also important potholes things like that right. some of the ambulances right. will them out. so again I think all of us were looking for clarification first. We believe, first and foremost, that this is a health <coughs> and safety issue more than anything else. Um, the town's been doing this for, what, 62 years, roughly, has been taken care of, and doing a great job, by the way. I mean, the, the DPW has been doing fine. The police patrol there. There is public access on most of the roads because, again, the police do patrol there. Uh, there's people uh, up and down the roads and all that. I think so the little nitpicking things are really at this point uh, not important what's important to us is that again we have a lot of people on these private ways many of whom are elderly um, many of whom would suffer greatly uh, from an emergency vehicle not being able to get down there or having to wait for another DPW vehicle to get there to clear the road uh, you gentlemen I don't think you guys did but we heard the story before about about Kathy's husband um, uh, Mike Joyce who suffered a heart attack last winter I believe they had to wait for a vehicle to get there for a plow to come from situate to plow the road to get the uh, ambulance in now that was about an hour um, after the last meeting we had I'm sure you're all aware mr. Joyce suffered <coughs> uh, another heart attack here right out on the front steps um, if that had been the same situation as the previous one he would not be here right now he wouldn't have made it because again the vehicles wouldn't have been able to get there um, I would say again we stress first and foremost that I, we believe that it's the Selectman's responsibility is the town's responsibility to maintain the health and, and welfare of their, you know, their constituents. I mean, safety is, is a number one issue, and this is what we're, this is our platform. We realize that legally, with bylaws, yes, you can do it. You can pull it back. You can do whatever as far as that's concerned. I mean, that's in the bylaws. We're not, we're not disputing that. Right. We're saying that in the issue of fairness, just plain fairness, you've been doing it for 60 years, and the people have come to depend on that. Look around. Look around this room. Just look at everybody's, look into everybody's face here, and tell me that you guys are going to just say, "All right, sorry, we're dropping you, and we're going to leave you to fend for yourself through harsh winters, through other problems." We're we're wondering if there's any situation that we can come to, um, an agreement, a compromise, uh, find the funds someplace to at least do this. Or do it halfway. Uh, do it enough so the vehicles can get through. You leave everybody to their own devices. I mean, it's not to mention. I mean, God forbid something bad happens to somebody. Somebody you know dies as a result of the emergency vehicles not being able to get in. The lawsuits alone would be crippling if they were to win. I mean, it would devastate the town. Talk about talk about a budget problem. So even just for that alone, but again, we're not hopping on that. We're hopping again, health and safety. Fair enough, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Mr. Norton? Yeah, I just need to get a clarification because I've heard different, uh, different answers uh, to this situation about the hour or the 45-minute wait. Yes, is the fire chief here? I think he is. Chief Judge, are you in the hallway? And I think he, Mr. Judge, uh, Chief Judge, could you please come forward? I don't know if you heard the question from Mr. Norton. Uh, it was a question about um, there was an issue raised on the um, response time uh, back in January with Mr. Joyce. Um, it's been suggested, or at least an, uh, alleged, that it was over an hour and a half for the, an, an hour, hour, an hour, an hour for the response. To do you have any information on that? Four minute response time from the time you got the call. Okay. For the first responder. For the first responder. Okay. That okay. That's a, I just want to clear the average. Yeah, the, the, the ambulance, our ambulance was busy. We marshaled the ambulance from Marshall. Okay. They couldn't get in because the road wasn't plowed, so they had to bring a vehicle. Am I right? We had to bring a vehicle. From I situation. don't even know whether they brought a vehicle because at the time I was with my husband and I 
Okay. Couldn't tell you who came and who didn't come. I guess what I'm saying, Mr. Chairman, is that I think I, we have to, you know, just look at the <laughs> facts and if it's if yeah. it's an hour, it's an hour. But if it's four it's minutes, it's four minutes. It you know, so. I was told I, the, uh, yeah, I think okay. we just have right. to so I think clear the, uh, just want, hold on, Mrs. Joyce, for a moment. Um, thank you, Chief. Um, you're welcome to stay in here if you can find a seat. If you don't mind waiting in the hall, that would be great. Um, so let's just dispel that, okay? Because I don't. No, no, that's okay, sir. I just don't want, as Mr. Norton said, have these questions abounding of lack of response or a delay. So that's been cleared, okay? Now, Mrs. Joyce. Okay. The problem is, because we're so far displaced from situate proper, we have a special set of circumstances. Okay, the road that accesses 36 residents. One second. Can Could, you, can you, you chat, sir, can you take that outside uh, discussion? Thank you. This road we're talking about accesses 36 residents. Okay, it is the only road in and out. However, it's used as a public access because it comes in, it goes up and around, and you come back out again. We have sightseers down there all the time. We have bikers, we have joggers, we have walkers, we have surfers. We even have marked rocks where they've had publicly sponsored road races. I don't know how you can do that if it's considered private property. We have no signage saying that they are private ways. Uh, apparently years ago there was a sign at the end of Alden Street that said private way and the town had asked them to take it down. Well, let me just address a few things. We're not talking about public roads, so everybody understands right. who are not here, but p primarily the people on TV understand. We're not talking about public roads. We're talking about private ways. And from a, and Mr. Toomey, I, I expect this town council to correct me, um, we're talking about private ways that are private rights to those citizens who end up purchasing property on those ways. They're not publicly accepted roads. And there are about three different methods by which those roads historically could be accepted publicly. Once they're accepted publicly, then it becomes the domain of the town, in this case situate, to take on the responsibilities of caretaking those roads. Um, when people buy on private ways, they do so by virtue of purchasing the property. But when you buy on a private way, even though that the, the shall we say, the residents who live on that way, 36, 5, 2, whatever the number is, it's not considered legally a public way because those people who buy onto the way, I think from, I know from the reading of it, it's like incidental. I know that sounds bizarre because you could have 36 people or 36 homes living on it, but until the way is accepted as a part of the town, it's still considered a private way. Now, and that's why I thought the memo was helpful, only for, certainly for our standpoint, even though 36 people use it, doesn't still make it a public way. Um, and so our problem from a town perspective is that you're right, we do have a bylaw, you've mentioned it earlier, that the town may use or try to at least fill in, grade, bumps, holes in the road. But may is not mandatory, it's permissive, which means that the town is not obligated to do this legally. The town has taken on the responsibility when it can. It did so back in 78 when it was passed a town meeting. I know from review of the memo, you probably understand why the town has not been able to do it. Because like everything, when you have a budget, things are getting diminished. Alloc resources are being alloc allocated in other areas. And at some point, you know, it can't be done because the money's being used for other things. Um, you know, I... I I certainly am not trying to not be passionate about this or insensitive because, frankly, all you folks live on private ways. Most of you do. And at this point in time, the town can't continue to pay to do that. Legally, it's not obligated to. So that's why the town's not saying it would do. In fact, I know when we get to the snow issue, it could potentially create liability to the town. I, I disagree with Mr. Toss, Tossi. I disagree with you that the town would take on an obligation or a liability. Again, I respectfully disagree on that. But um, having said that, I, the way I see this, and I'm just giving you my own opinion going forward, we as a town, and in particular all the folks who live on private ways, we need to figure out how can we get through this, what are we going to do. I think everybody's position here is to say, town, you've got to continue to do it. 
and it's the town's position that we can't afford to do it anymore. We're not obligated or mandated to do it anymore, but we'd like to try to work to try to upgrade these roads so that the town, uh, going forward, can make these public ways, but that's going to be a cost factor because to upgrade these roads, it's going to cost a lot of money. But if we can work in partnership and work together over the course of time, we can do it. That's not going to solve anything for the next six months, maybe the not next 24 months, but if we can work a plan to work together, we can hopefully achieve this. But it's not going to be done overnight. And the other point I was just going to say is, is that, you know, we have 101 public roads. And I know from the memo, you probably saw it, but I mean, you can drive down a lot of these public roads, and you're going to see those roads are in disrepair, and those roads need to be fixed. So it's a problem. And I know everybody who lives on a private way is going to say, but this is a road. This is a public road. I live on it. My neighbors live on it. They use it. However, it's, they're no difference legally than, let's say, somebody's dirt road, which is a private road. It's no difference than having, let's say, a um, condominium association, which is a private road maintained by the association, or a neighborhood association, which is a private road. Again, obligations are that they are to maintain it because they're private. You folks, and I know you're not going to want to hear me say this, unfortunately got benefits by living on a private way with the town finances to plow, to fill in the road that they weren't obligated to do. And now we have people who live on the public roads probably are going to complain and say, why are you taking care of the private roads? Because our tax dollars should go for public roads. That's what it should be used for. And I know it has been, excuse me, excuse me. There's a case already in suit in another town where some town members are suing the town for actually doing what you're asking us to do. So you know what? It's, it's a difficult time. But I'm just trying to share with you an explanation. You don't have to accept it. It's not an easy explanation, but that's where the town is right now. But um, I speak too much, so I, before I do, I just, were there any comments from the board? Because I'm not, I'm not ending this. I'm going to get to your questions, so hold on. I just, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Norton. Get, I'd like to ask a uh, town council uh, on what statute of law he bases his opinion that we should not do this. So I get that out right on the table. Talking maintenance or snow? We're talking maintenance, maintenance first, first. Or maybe yeah. you can deal with they're, snow. They're very off. different because maintenance and snow is different. The basic proposition that the town cannot spend public money on private land. We're dealing, as Mr. Dennehy described, with private land. Now, there are exceptions to that by the statute. There's one statute that allows the town by bylaw to get permission from town meeting in order to do repair work, essentially, minor repairs. Uh, on private ways. That the town has done by passage of the, of the bylaw in terms of repairs. For snow plowing, there's a separate statute that has to be accepted by a ballot vote. Then it's a basically a three-step process, ballot vote for the acceptance of the statute. And the Board of Selectmen has to determine, just because it's a public way, is it open to public use? Uh, after that determination, then you have to appropriate money. So it's a three-step process in order to uh, plow private ways. That hasn't been done, and it, frankly, it would be an illegal expenditure of money. Uh, I don't know if you followed it last winter, but I think the town of Middleborough had this very issue where taxpayers, 10 taxpayers came forward, sued the town, the court issued an injunction saying you cannot spend public money on private ways not having followed the statutes. So where we stand now is we cannot, from a legal standpoint, do any plow. <coughs> we can, under the bylaw, do minor repairs, uh, and that's that's the legal status of us at this point. Thank, thank, thank you. Mr. Vignani. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, just so everyone kind of understands where we get the funding for our rep road repair work, um, no money comes from the budget towards that, nor has it in the last decades to go towards our repair work. We use only the money that's allocated to us from the state through Chapter 90 money. And it's about $500,000, give or take, 525 or something in that, in that range. Um, so that's not a lot of money to repair 
how many hundreds of miles of roads? 106 miles of roads. Um, and my understanding is that there is a plan in place to utilize this money every year. And as John mentioned, not only do, do public ways want money, but there's private, excuse me, private ways want the money, but there's public roads that need this money to use repair work on those roads as well that we're not able to do. Um, and I think what the priority has been is that we've taken this money and we've um, used it in terms of the most, use, most widely used roads in the town. So most of the repair work, there's kind of a pecking order, I would imagine, now in terms of what gets repaired. And the first repair work goes to the most widely used roads, which are public ways and your bigger, more, more used roads. Um, as as uh, town council just mentioned, we can use the money to fix private ways, and, and in some cases they, it should be used. But it's all under a certain umbrella of money that can be used to do that. And, and like we said, the pecking order now is to use the most widely used roads that use the most, most of the um, citizens of the town utilize. And, um, and that's the way that, it, that it's being done, which is a logical sense to, to utilize the money that is really minute in terms of what the needed money is to keep our roads up to standards. Other, one more, one more, more. Any other questions or observations from the board? All right. I might have some later, but not right so now. So let me, let me ask. This lady over in the back here. <coughs> these private ways of a 20-foot path down the center of three of the roads that are private. One of them is a dirt road. And what's happening is, as the soil settles around those manhole covers, you're going to have a problem because they're now getting more and more exposed. Even if we hired a private person to do the plowing, you're going to get caught because it's your easement. It's you are the ones that have to maintain that easement, in my understanding, because we all paid a $20,000 benefit or bet betterment to have that put down the center of the road. Every house there paid $20,000 to put that sewer with a 20-foot right-of-way, which is basically the size of most of the roads out there. Where is the legal standing on that? Good. I need to have an answer. Mr. Toomey? Well, the, the, the easement is, is for purposes of the, of the sewer. Uh, to the extent that the uh, use of that easement interferes with the private way, then the private landowners might have some rights in, in terms of uh, the interference with their with their private rights by virtue of the town's use of the easement. Uh, but that would have to be determined on a case-by-case -case basis in terms of basic law is that uh, if you're using the easement, you can't use it in a way that destroys the private way of use. Well, and, and I, I, it does, though. Uh, and with all due respect, but hold on, hold on, Mrs. Jenkins. Ms. Jenkins, it, it does in the sense that the easement was granted in order to afford the residents the ability to have sewer. That's what the easement was for. If in the process, after putting the easement there, now the town has the, the right to go within 20 feet because of the sewage, okay? If that begins to promote or cause trouble, which you're suggesting, Mr. Toomey, town council is telling us that, okay, then maybe then you have to raise that issue with the town and the town will have to go out and take a look at it. If yeah. it's determined that it is, then the town will have to go out and fix that or, you know, make sure that it's not eroding. But... Okay, so oh, I know, but so we're trying to give you the answer is yeah. what I'm trying to say. Excuse me, Mr. Murray. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to give you the answer, and that's at that point, I mean, then I would say raise it with the town, DPW. We'll take a look at it. We'll ensure Mr. Bangert will send somebody out, Mr. Breen or Mr. Cafferty, and take a look at that. But that's a little different than the maintenance of the ways as a whole. If the town causes it because of that easement, then there's some remedy available, and the town will have to address it. I don't know if that's the answer you're looking for, but that's the best that we can do. As far as grading and maintaining, if there were, if it, you're, you put the sewer in, who, and somebody was grading and clipped the top of the manhole cover and ripped it off or whatever, what's the legal layout of that? Because you aren't doing the maintenance on it, but it's your easement. I mean, you have that 
Well, if it turns out that somebody hires a private contractor who takes a grader and clips the top of the sewer manhole off, then the contractor, whoever was hired, is going to be responsible for fixing that. That wasn't the town who did it. It was the grader who did it. On the other hand, if it's the town who goes out and grades it and clips the top of it, the town's on the hook for doing it because the town grader did it on a private way, and now they've just, so to speak, bought the manhole to do it. it, it I, I understand that. I understand that. Other questions? Um, hold on. I haven't forgotten yet. My, there was somebody else over here, I thought. Um, Hold on, Mrs. Joyce. Yes, Mr. Murray. <coughs> so, Mary, it sounds like because the easement is sewer issued, you've got a situation where you should come talk to Al and find out what's going on and with Trisha's office as well. And some of the details of that we don't want to get into tonight about like a grader or a backhoe or all that sort of stuff, but that's clearly an exceptional situation that's not just a you know regular private way because the town is involved. So. I think you're good in terms of what to do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. Um, this gentleman over here. Hi. Uh, Rich Conley, 3 Palfrey Street in Hemorrhock. Thank uh, you. Just a comment and then maybe a question. Uh, last year, we had that major snowstorm in December, which we had about 9 to 10 inches of snow, the big one. And in Hemorrhock, they were plowing River Street and they plowed Central Ave. And the side streets didn't get plowed probably for about two days after that. Now, this is before anybody basically knew about the law, you know, about the city town saying we're not doing private roads. I called the DPW two days later, and the poor guy who was answering the phone at that time, because he <laughs> said he got about 45 calls, said, yeah, by the way, the selectmen said they're not doing the side roads. Now, my comment is, is I understand you're saying, that, you know, there's everything really going on, but you're explaining this now. But come this winter, and you mentioned about taxis, and you talked about uh, public ways and private ways. Are you basically saying that people who live on a public way and people who pay who live on a private way basically pay the same amount of taxes, if more or less? So a public way person, someone who lives on a public way, has more rights and then a person who lives on a private way and they pay the same amount of taxes. So people on the private ways are literally, with no disrespect, are getting screwed because the tax that you're paying taxes, and I thought paying taxes, one of the things for paying taxes is the town. You know, it could be maintenance, it could be plowing, it could be fire and police and rescue. But now you're saying with the private ways, oh no, we can't do that, but we still want the taxes. Can you answer that? I got two, two points I want to address, okay? The first is the, the snow removal, because it's a different scenario that we're dealing with. Town Council has indicated that the town has no legal obligation or right to do the plowing, and if they do, there's liability. That's number one. Having said that, there is a policy in place through the Department of Public Works that creates a priority system for roads. The first priority are the main streets to plow, and that's the, what they do through the snowstorms. The second priority is to clean the main and secondary roads, okay, that they've identified. The third priority is then to clear the publicly accepted residential streets, okay? So now we get to the streets that are low on the priority list to clear those. Simultaneously, right after that, the other streets, the private ways, will get a pass-through, okay? So clearly for snow removal during the middle of a storm, if it's getting um, significantly high, well, Mr. Banger can tell us, they're going to do a pass through the private streets. But they're not going to keep going back and forth through the course of the storm. At the end of the storm, they'll go back and do it again. In the event that there is a medical emergency, uh, it's my understanding, Mr. Banger, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that there will be a connection between the DPW during the plowing and the, um, uh, in this case, the fire department or the police department, that if they have to go to a location, they'll send out a plow to ensure that the uh, responders can get there. Um, now, the other question you raised, and, and I think what I was trying to do when I was thinking and preparing for our meeting tonight is to try to come up with some analogies, and they're not necessarily the greatest analogies from your perspective, but I think generally they're, they're good analogies in that if you take a piece of property in the West End, okay, and it has a dirt road, and you could have three or homes off that road, okay, the road is private. People in the West End, if they you know, could say, that's my road, it's private, but I want you to come plow it, just like a private road is. 
I said a condominium association because there's a kind of a better example of you could have a number of multiple condominiums within a con contained within a um, um, condominium unit or, or not unit but uh, development. Okay. They have to pay for their own. It's a private road, a private way. They have to pay for the maintenance. It's a part of their condominium association. I see where you're coming from. I, I really do, because you have a house, you're a private owner, owning a house on a private way. How does that distinguish your ownership from somebody on a public way? And I think the, the difference is one road's accepted by the town, the other isn't. And if it's not accepted, it's private, it's privately owned. Only those people who live on that way have the rights to it. And that's, that's where the town's coming I, from. I understand that, Mr. Chairman, but my point, only my point, when, when you say, when you were talking about the homeowners, homeowners association or condominium unit, that's private property. That whole subdivision is private property. That has nothing to do with a public way or a private way or anything. If you go into a condominium complex, that's private property. That's the developer's property. So the reason why that's a private, you get private plows that way is because it's a private area. My other Actually, I'm not trying to cut you off because I, I know gotta have other people. So I, I, I just, about, I'm not you trying still to. Haven't answered me about my my main thing was why am I different than a person who lives on a private road Be as far as taxes? Uh, hold on, Mr. Murray. Same okay. Same thing as someone living on Country Way. Sure. It's taxes or Okay. I, I would only say that, and, and I, I could be wrong, but the reason why it is private, it is not accepted by the town, which means that you have a private road, and the people who live on that road have rights to pass and repass over that way to get to their homes. Excuse me, folks. So it's not publicly accepted. So there is a distinction, and it's similar to a condominium association because it is private. It's a private way. And I, I, we could disagree on it, but I'm saying that's where I'm coming from on it, okay? No, don't be. You're not. If it's so much in that, it's a private way like a condominium complex, but you named, the street is named in the town of Sitchell. It is listed as a street or a town, a street or a road in the town of Sitchell. It's because so when they... That's still considered not accepted with the town of Sitchell. Even private, so private condominium associations have name on those streets or roads. They're just private, just like your private way's private. The, the, the issue is whether or not the town has accepted it publicly. <laughs> And that's, that's the difference. I mean, the town could accept publicly um, a condominium association if it so choose, chose, but it has to meet the requirements of subdivision and the, the roadway layout. Hold on one second. Oh, hold on. I've got I to move on. I'm sorry. No, no, don't be. No, that's what we're here for. Um, Mr. Murray. Sure. Thank you, Mr. And Chair. And Mr. Harris. You know, you, you raise an interesting point, though, and I understand where you're coming from when you say you're paying the same amount of taxes when whatever the same tax rate or whatever right. and you're not getting plowed where someone else is right. and I understand where you're coming from on that and I hadn't actually thought of it that way before but listening to the discussion though I mean you know there's unfortunately there's tax inequities all across the board and it goes back to sort of the common good and all this sort of thing and you know my tax dollars go for the senior center mm -hmm. I don't happen to have any elderly um, family members in town. Other people, I have a lot of young kids, they don't participate in the rec department, but tax dollars go over the rec department. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that, that inequities are minimal or trivial, and I'm saying I, I agree with your point, but it's not the only sort of inequity. We all pay taxes and all of us get different degrees of services. Some of us get a lot of services. I've got four young kids. They're all soon in the Situate school system, so I'm doing real well by the Situate school system. But, you know, so it's, it's not quite as clear-cut as that, but I do concede your point that it certainly seems, you know, it, it's something tangible and right in front of your face. Okay. Just, just Mr. Harris, was next. just one thing I thought of just briefly is that your property is being assessed as a property as a whole. The fact of whether or not you're on a private way or not is not, I, I, and I wish Mr. Jambowski, Steve Jambowski, and maybe I'm wrong in saying this, but your property is being assessed as a, as a total. And the fact that you're on a private way doesn't diminish the value of your property just as much as somebody who has a, whole, a large parcel, they're getting valued at the same thing that, as your property is. Just the difference is, is that you're not on a public way. Mr. Harris. 
uh, the exact same question written down. It was to Jim, <clears throat> and I can see where you're coming from because, you know, first of all, we accept streets at almost every annual town meeting, street acceptance committee. They have to be brought up to standards, and all your home, many of your homes probably couldn't be brought up to the standards to meet our needs, 50 foot right away, drainage, and all that stuff. <clears throat> the difference is, like you alluded to and John talked about, Merritt Woods, Doctors Hill, whether they're private, whether they're public, let's say they're private, for example, those people bought those units, townhouses, condos, knowing they were private. I feel for all you people, you've had your homes for four generations, so I see where you're coming from. So my question to Jim is, when you were defining private ways, is there a difference, and correct me if I'm mistaken, Al, if Doctors Hill still remains pri private or Merritt Woods or, or one of those, if it still remains private and I own one of those units, is it the same as any one of these people that ho own a home in Humrock? Is that, is, that, is that the same by definition? Basically, if the road is not dedicated at, at an annual town meeting, right. The same way whether it's a road in a subdivision just been built and hasn't, the hasn't been by, by the way, i got to jump in. This Walnut Tree Hills, a, a new development, and that hasn't been accepted for, right. for little different reasons. I think they can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I So, but this is a little different. Go ahead. No. No, let me, I just You're like out of order. You're out of order, please. I'm sorry, Jim. Mr. Toomey. No, I, the, the difference is the ownership in Could I just ask a follow-up? Sure. If so, if it's a private way, and in the summertime they wanted to hold a block party, could they? Do they have the right to block it off if it's, it's their? It, it, yeah. Amongst themselves, right. They all have rights in common, so their rights are are amongst their neighborhood, not vis-a-vis -vis the town. The town does not prohibit. People want a private way to say no one can come up here without our permission, and, and that's the difference. They they control that road. Now, hold on. There for four people I said I'd give to. This lady in the back was the first that she's had her hand raised. Cheaper solution for, for all the dirt roads, anyway. Grading and repairing 
is way cheaper than paving and putting in new drainage. Am I correct? I, I can't agree with you more. Okay. So with all this said, we're wasting time and a lot of hot air and people are going to get angry. Can we have a liaison assigned so that we can come to an amicable solution with the town? Help us help you find the money to make everybody here better. <laughs> You, ra I mean, you, you raise a, a, a very good point, and I think that's really where I'd like to see this going. So thank you for raising that. I think, you know, having a liaison is not a bad solution. I think there, the solution that I've come to mind is either, obviously, and I'm not saying this is the way it's going to go, either you pay for it yourself privately, or maybe we can talk with the town officials and see if there's some way of doing a partnership to figure out the future of private ways and how to deal with it and how to go forward. And I think that's why we need to have probably somebody to talk to as a liaison. I think that would make yeah, sense. Correct. Sure. Yeah. We asked the board on the 21st okay. and told us to come back tonight. And now everybody here <coughs> with the same problem. Right. It's a, uh, when I say a liaison, one person from you. We're not talking about a legal issue. We're talking about a solution. Maybe we can appropriate funds from somewhere else. Maybe we can raise funds in a different way. There's money out there. There's grants to win it. And as far as the comment about it not affecting our value, no one's going to buy a house on a private way ever again. I'm a real estate agent, and I've been one for 25 years, and I've sold real estate to Cicero for that long. And you're crazy if you think someone's going to buy a house and pay the price to live on a road that's not going to be maintained without them knowing about it. When I sold houses on these streets, the town has maintained those roads. Now they stop again, without notice, stop their services. Has anyone here ever gotten a letter? No. no. That's kind of is Okay. Okay, you've made your point, and I think you're you're doing a little dis. <laughs> you're not helping your point. I know. Excuse me. Excuse me. I, li listen, I've got the chair. You raise a point about a liaison, and I said to you that I think that makes sense. However, I want to make sure everybody understands just because we have a liaison, whether it's from this board or somebody from the town, doesn't mean that we're going to come up with a solution that you're going to be happy with. Okay? I think it's fair to say that we need to talk and figure out what can be some scenarios and some solutions. But I suspect it's also mean that people are going to have to contribute towards it. So I just want to throw it out there because if your thought process is you think you're going to get uh, a liaison to me, and then you're going to say, oh, you can take it out of this budget, you can take it out of the school budget, you can take it out of the Council on Aging, or you can take it here. No, that's not what it's about. It's to try to figure out a solution how we can deal with this issue, not just in yours, but across the town, because you're not just the only neighborhood that's impacted by this. Um, you know, how does the board feel about trying to get somebody to appoint to, to work? But again, this person would have to be not just for South Hummer Rock or Hummer Rock or Fourth Cliff, it's, it, it would be a person f across the board. I, I think it's, it's, I think it's a, certainly a good idea. Yeah. I'm just trying to think how do we find it rather than have uh, one liaison to, to, to the group in this room, would have to figure out some way to have a liaison, one person, uh, a liaison to the entire time, because as, as you said, Mr. Chairman, there were 181 private ways or whatever that number was. So uh, I think the, the concept is great. I would be happy to volunteer myself as I think everyone else on this board would, but I think we have to figure out some way to have that liaison to the entire town uh, rather than just the well, how, how does that a person needs to work really closely with, with yeah. Town Hall and Al and Tricia and everybody as well. I mean, it's not like it's a big job. going to come I mean, up with something. Which is fine. Again, I don't think it's private versus public here. Well, what do people do when they want their road fixed, Al? They come and they write a letter or they send some sort of correspondence to you. I think you make a good point. Al Banger, Department of Public Works. The, the issue is not uh, private versus public only. It is the amount of funds available to repair the roads. We're not repairing public, publicly accepted residential roads either. And we can begin naming names, Old Colony Way. You can find poster child of residential streets that were paved years ago that have been publicly accepted and, and are not being maintained. We're putting all of our money in maintaining the roads that people use every day, specifically in Hummer Rock 
uh, Central Avenue and um, River Street, as, as well as the fact that we replaced two bridges at a very high cost. The state has helped replace both the C Street and Julian Street Bridge. Those were essential for everybody's use every day. So our tax dollars are going towards repairing the roads that all of us use every day, but just not the residential streets we drive down to to reach our homes. Um, our money has been spent on uh, repairing, for instance, most recently, uh, Elm Street, Border <coughs> Street, and Greenfield Lane. Uh, Henry Turner Bailey, all major roads. That's where we spend our money. This year we're spending money repairing the road that goes between the railroad tracks and the harbor on Beaver Dam. Next year we'll spend it on repairing the roads that go into uh, down past the, the uh, Jenkins School. Uh, First, Parish. First Parish Road. There's only limited funds available, so we're putting that in repairing the potholes on uh, the roads of Clap Road where everybody is traveling across to try to get over to the highway at the end of the uh, to and from work and the main roads we use every day. So it's, it's really an issue of residential streets are not being maintained. And if you have a dirt street, a dirt street is actually more expensive to maintain than a paved street. A paved street can be plowed readily, a dirt street, every time you go down it, you need to repair it in the spring. So it's not quite right to say that a dirt street is cheap to maintain. A dirt street is actually more expensive to maintain because you're constantly maintaining it, constantly maintaining, much like you would a gravel driveway versus a paved driveway. So I, what, I guess my point is, if you if you have a problem with your road, which I'm sure all of you do, the, the process is to get in touch with the DPW and you don't like to hear this, but you put on a list. You know, there's $500,000 worth of money to fix all the roads in the town. And um, it's up to the DPW to allocate that most effectively. So if they look at a road, Al, correct me if I'm wrong, if you see a road that's in deplorable condition somewhere, you can take money and fix a road in Hummer Rock, a road on Ocean Ave, wherever it happens to be. Um, that's just not the guidelines that we're running the town off of right now. And um, you know that's that's the process write an email send pictures like we've seen and if there's funds they'll be fixed okay hold, hold on the lady actually behind this lady the lady yes the uh, you yes oh no 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 hold on one second I'm sorry I'll get back to you in a moment she had her hand up earlier and I, I um, Betty McNeil. I'm on Julian Street in Hamlet. I'm thank God not involved with the following I'm here to support the people and I think that the Civic Association, we had an officials meeting. At that meeting, it was, this was discussed. That's as far as it went, it was discussed. But one of the town officials told the people who live on private roads that they can get an abatement starting with their due um, December tax bill because they don't receive the same services that the, not, the people on the public roads do. So I'd like that clear up, please. Um, okay, um, Mr. Bangard, I think, was the individual you're referencing. The question was asked at that meeting, do um, we live in a private <clears throat> way versus a public way? Uh, and, I, and they said, we pay the same, the question you heard again today, we pay the same taxes as everybody else. And I said that properties are assessed based on the whole. If you're not happy with the way, if you feel like your property is in diminished value because you live in a private way, then there's a process for that. That takes place after you get your tax bill in January. There's a 30-day period in which you can apply for an abatement. And that's, there's a, an elected board that evaluates your request. So. so I think what he was trying to suggest to you is the process. If people feel that they have been, that their property is diminished in value as a result, the process is to go to the Board of Assessors. There's an application that needs to be filed at a certain deadline in January, so it would be 2011. Whether, whether, or, okay, whether or not it was, and I'm not going to say you're right and he's wrong or vice versa. The reality is that's a question, uh, you know, people can, uh, can try to abate their taxes for a no multitude of reasons to do so. It's not this board, it's the Board of Assessors to address it. So um, this gentleman here, yes. Daniel Perrin, uh, 10 Melton Street, Hamlet. Da Daniel uh, Perrin? Is three it? Points. Oh, hold on, is it Perrin? Just so, Kim, do you have that? Okay. Oh, Perrin, is it? Perrin. 
Thank you. Thank you. First issue, easement with utilities have to obtain easements through the town. I know this because I had to have a anchor pole put on the end of my street, at the end of Melton Street, and working with the power company and the phone company, <coughs> they informed me if I wanted that pole in and done quickly, I would grant them an easement on my property, not on the right-of-way property. Otherwise, they would have to come to the town to obtain an easement to put a pole on. So if it's a private way, why are <coughs> required to get easements from the municipality to put poles, utility poles, on a private way? That's number one. I have just two more issues. Second of all, my main concern is the plowing. If the main road is plowed and the side roads, the biggest issue we have in Humrock, and I think the PW will give me out, snow normally is not that deep in Humrock. But we do have a real serious ice problem. I believe you would bear that out, sir? Yes. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So if the plow is plowing the main road, and you've got this slush piled up at the end of your street, and it freezes overnight, how in God's name do we get out, and how in God's name does somebody else get in? Because once it's froze, it's froze. I've lived in Humrock long enough to know that it gets pretty damn tight down there. So that plowing is, is my main concern. And as far as trying to work with individuals, it just so happens that on Milton Street, myself and four other neighbors paved Milton Street, except for the last 30 feet, because we could not get anywhere with conservation. And I'm sure there would be a lot of people, I would love to be able just to finish paving Milton Street, that's one less street DPW is going to worry about. Uh, I, I see the smile on your face, and I think you know where I'm coming from. I, I um, Let me try to address them quickly um, with the utility. Um, and Mr. Um, Toomey can correct me. Um, because if it's a public way, they have to come to the town because the town owns the way, public street. So they have to get the permission of the town because we own it, okay, as a town. So they have to ask us for permission. If it's on a private way, I, maybe they have to come to town. I don't think they do because what they'd have to do is they have to go to every single person on that street, the private way, to get the permission to put it on that private way. No, That's I'm why, I, oh, hold on, I'm just saying, I know you may have been told that. I'm just giving you a quick answer in my own mind saying it would be a lot easier for the utility to go to one person, that's you because you're a private homeowner, to put some kind of utility that they need. I, but again, I may be wrong, maybe in private ways they have to come to the town to do it, but I, my understanding is it's a private way, so they'd have to get the permission of everybody on the way. As far as the um, plowing and the ice, um, you know, I can understand what you're saying. If you're going to get a bunch of slush and it freezes overnight, that's, that's a major nuisance. Um, maybe we can address that with, well, everyone do, you know. I, I live on 3A, and I, I deal with the same thing, you know. It's, well. Um, and as far as the conservation goes, that's an environmental issue. The ComCom is charged with protecting uh, the Wetland Protection Act town. So they are telling you you can't build because it's a sensitive area. As you very well know, you, many of people live on close, uh, basically a barrier beach is basically what it is. So you, you, there are certain rights, inherent rights from a state and federal perspective that you can't do. And while it might be easier, maybe 40 years ago, to have paved it, they're not allowing us to do that anymore. Well, so the, the only the, the final on that was the last 30 feet had not been paved. If it had any bituminous concrete on it, they could not deny <coughs> the paving of it. And to me, I'm sorry, it gets a little ridiculous. And if everybody's talking about trying to work together, I think other departments have got to somewhat come down a few notches and try to work with people. Mr. Danahy Thank just you. answered the conservation part because it really is not the purview of this panel to discuss the conservation because it's the Conservation Commission and they're bound by state laws and federal laws, state, particularly the Wetlands Protection Act of the state. I heartily encourage, I'm the liaison to the Conservation Commission. I've sat in there for hundreds of hours dealing with all sorts of, of issues about resource areas, which Hummerock, the entire area, as you all know, is a resource area. I'd be, you're glad, you're glad to bring, you're glad to bring it, oh, let me finish, please. 
27 years. Good. Thank but, you. So you know to bring those issues before conservation, sir. Uh, there was another gentleman. I th was it you, sir? Okay. You had had your hand raised. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious about the designation of public versus private when I can't speak for everybody else in Hummer Rock, but I know my deed does not extend into the middle of the street. So, so I, I guess I, I'm trying to understand that distinction and how that affects what we're talking about. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, I could probably give you an answer, but I'm going to give it to the town council because I think he'd be much more succinct in explaining it. There, there's, there's a rationale behind it. You have a deed that says you own to the, along the street, you own the street, unless it's a public way. So even though your deed doesn't say that, well, doesn't you, oh, 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 Mr. Bedoulian, hold on. Let him give him an answer. If, if you have a deed that says you live along whatever street that is, you have rights in that street, and that, that's the way deeds are interpreted. That's a matter of state law. So you do own the street. <laughs> okay. This lady back here. Um, my question has to do Name and address. Oh. Name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Liz Herzl, 8 Kennelwood Street. Her could you spell your last name? H-E-R-T-Z-E-L. Thank you. Mr. Banger, Chief Judge. I can't tell you what, at what time the uh, time frame of the shame was plowed, but I can show you the truck can go through the stone, put chains on it, and go anywhere. We can get you. Let's do my kind of work. Right. I but mean, there's a lot of people that are farther down, and there's streets that are farther down that can support well, the medical. We'll do we the best we, I mean, if, if, if the wait is too long, we will carry you through the snow to get you to that ambulance on the public street that's already been plowed. Mr. Bangert, and then you want to elaborate? Is that not every street is plowed instantly. I mean, during every storm, there are plows out all over the place plowing, and some streets are not plowed, and some streets are plowed, whether they're a private main road or a private, I mean, a public main road or a public residential street or a private street. Not all streets are plowed at all times when the storm starts and an emergency occurs. So what happens is when an emergency occurs, the DPW diverts vehicles to where the emergency is. We will help, we will go through people's backyards if necessary to accomplish what the fire department, an ambulance service, or the police require in order to respond. That's true for a residential street that's publicly accepted that hasn't been plowed yet. It's true for Main Street that we haven't gotten to yet. That's also true for a private street or a driveway. The gentleman in the doorway, I, I, could you state your name? Can you state your name? Oh, William Fallon, 59 Ocean Drive. Thank you. Uh, you said earlier that the money that used to go for this has been transferred to other initiatives. No. I'd like to know where it's gone. It, it's been cut. It's been cut. You said earlier it was went to other initiatives. Your own I stand corrected. It's been cut. All right. Um, this gentleman here, I actually my said. Is, I'm sorry. My name you is can Paul O'Neill. Okay. Um, I live at 10 Franklin Street in Hummer Rock, and I, I'm a court officer in the Hingham District Court. I just wanted to let you know, um, I'm an insulin-dependent diabetic, and, and the <coughs> Situate Fire Department has been at my house twice in the last three months to take me to the South Shore Hospital because of diabetic insulin reactions. I just want, all I wanted to know was, um, and I also have a neighbor behind me that's 93 years old, you know, and, and she's worried about how an uh, ambulance is going to get to her, too. So that's just my question. Um, Situ the Situate Fire Department has saved my life twice in the last three months. I guess I, uh, they're going to do what they've done in the past, which is to, in an, an event of an urgent or an emergency, they're going to go. Uh, the truck will go right through the snow or the, whatever it is to get there. Um, simultaneously, if there's other things they need in order to get there, the DPW will come down with a plow or a front-end loader, whatever it may need, to, to be able to achieve that. 
Um, and, you know, as Chief Judge has said, I mean, the truck can go through an awful lot of snow because they put those trains on it, that's, uh, chains on it, that's like a, uh, it's even heavier probably than a grader or a front end loader. So that thing is going to go <laughs> when it's in low gear. So as far as getting there, I, I you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that there won't be any problems. I mean, I can't say definitively there won't be, but I think it's fair to say that, you know, when you have the fire chief telling us uh, they will be there, um, I trust that. He's the head of the health and safety for the fire department. Okay. If he thought there was a problem, then obviously we as a board would take that into consideration and try to figure a solution out. But, um, All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. O'Neill. Um, hold on. I did. Was there other people? Um, I'm going to get to you, Mrs. I'm trying to get around to everybody who hasn't had it. Oh, this lady here. I'm sorry. I will get to you, sir, in a second, too. I blew a tire. I'm trying to get out of there. The road was off. And we, this gentleman was very nice. We had a long discussion. Remember that? Crop and gamble, the whole thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, we do not have on our gates access to River Street. On our gates, it says 125 feet this way. And we have a double lot, 100 feet this way. We own up to mean high tide. And we have a right to the river beach, which is, you know, the South River. We have uh, no rights going up River Street. So when you say, I have to correct you, that is a public way as far as we're concerned because we have to get to from our road to River Street. Half of River Street, they're trying to tell us it's a private way. It's part of River Street. So, you know, I pay taxes. I don't care. I, I believe in education. I believe in everything else. And I never I never objected pay, paying my taxes. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting so this year I am objecting to paying taxes. Because we don't own the road. We own the road. We own our property. Then what are we paying taxes to situate for? We might as well have Marshfield maintain us. Uh, with well, I can, I can answer that question, actually. You're paying for Chief Judge there to drive the truck with the chains to get down there, and you're paying for the firefighters and the EMTs to come trudging through the and snow. Let me finish, please. Exactly. So you ask a specific question, what you're paying taxes for. That's what you're paying taxes for. And our police department's doing a great job. Our conservation department's doing a good job protecting the resource area. You have access to the town libraries. You got Chief Judge. You got police. You got us. You know, Hummerock, we hear many, many times how Hummerock pays taxes and we don't get diddly squat. Okay? And I don't mean to put words, particular words, in some of your mouths, but that's sort of the common theme. And that's just not actually true. You get services. We give you services. We come down. We protect you whenever we possibly can, like we do everybody. So there are inequities all throughout towns. That's the nature of the town. So I completely understand, as I said to the gentleman who's now disappeared, um, you know, I understand the whole thing about you feel that you're not getting services about this particular mm -hmm. subject because it's front and center and right in your face, you know, when it's snowing and all that. But it's public ways, it's private ways, and we're doing it. You're getting the services. You just heard the chief say, you've heard us say, time and again. You're not going to have a problem in terms of the health and the safety. It's a fear you all have and it's a justifiable fear and we all have it regardless of what street we live on. But I want the potholes. I want to be able to get out onto River Street which right now I wish you would all go down there. The potholes are this high. Well I have been there and I do see the potholes. They're probably even a little deeper than that, to be honest with you. And okay? they're going to get deeper than that. Exactly. Now, that's all we're asking for. Well, sure. Fix the potholes. 
Sure. Okay. I do, two, two other points I just wanted to raise. Hold on one second, folks. Um, you know, you do, I know it's very hard when you're paying taxes and you're saying, I'm not getting services. And, and, and being candid and honest, you know, you hear that from people who live in mine it who are complaining that they're not getting fire services. They had a fire station that was closed down, and now there was a house fire up there where people ended up passing. And, you know, they're concerned that they're not getting their services. <coughs> and then there's school budget problems and the classroom size in that area is getting larger. Now they're complaining they're not getting their fair share of the services. You can go to the West End and complains because they have to trek and go here and go there. You can go anywhere, even in my neighborhood, and people are complaining similarly. But, you know, the 4th of July is a pretty big time down in Hummer Rock. And I defy any one of you to say that the police department doesn't do a good job with all the ruckus that goes on down there occasionally. So that's a huge service that's been done by the town. And it's the most expensive time for the police department's budget. So and I just want to let you know that that's something that has to be dealt with and addressed. And we do. And storms are a big problem. So you get you get services it's just obviously not in the manner that you wish or prioritize but we have to mr norton just one just one comment and this uh speaks to a number of comments from the floor about the fire department uh, the police department not being able to get to a to a private way because of one thing or another and many of us in this room have lived through the storms of 92 i guess it was and blizzard of 78 some of us and I'm sure you all saw it. What, what the fire department went through to get the houses, to get the people who were stranded, a little bit of ice is not going to stop them, believe me. Uh, so keep that in mind. They're not, they're not going to be stopped by a, a pile of ice at the end of the street. I saw them going down into, into areas that, that it was unbelievable. So that's all I wanted to say. So they'll try to do I know they'll do the job. This gentleman right here, sir. Jeff Barrison on 43 Central Avenue. It's not a private way, but these are my neighbors, and I see the small children standing out in the corner of those private ways. I see the seniors coming and going those private ways, and I have to disagree with the gentleman behind me who talked about a little slush. I, I, I know snow plowing. I've done it for various municipalities for 30 years of my life. I snow plowed for 96 hours during the blizzard of 78. And I, I've been in Hummer Rock for 54 years, my, my entire life. And I can tell you that there are a tremendous number of instances where the snow banks get three, four, and sometimes five feet high. If you come and you plow up and down Central Avenue, you are literally sailing these people in. If these people are in these roads and we get a big storm or we get a nor'easter and you guys are out plowing the main roads, they will not be able to escape. We have the best, I think we have the best police and the best fire in the state. I'm proud of them. But this is more than any, any fire department or police department could ask me to do. And as Chief Judge said, if that plow doesn't show up, they will go in there. They're not going to stand around and wait for a plow to show up. So they'll be a je they'll, they'll, their safety will be at jeopardy needlessly to save a few bucks on a budget that we can't. This, the, thing, the thing that's funny about plowing is it's not a fixed budget. It's not something that, that you can say we're going to save X number of dollars annually on because it fluctuates from one year to the next. So when you're looking at a budget, a budget issue, it's probably one that I would, or my personal feeling would be that I would move away from that and look for something that's more of a fixed number that I could work with and rely on, rather than something that may or may not occur. The fact of the matter is that there's a high probability that somebody's gonna get hurt. And I wanna know who in this room will stand up and say, if somebody gets hurt down there because we didn't plow, I'll take responsibility. Because that's what it's going to boil down to. It's a, it's a disaster waiting to happen. I've been there through the blizzard of 78. My family was there. We were there in the no-name storm. We were there in all the various And once that place floods up and once that water comes in, it won't be a case of whether sir, emergency service can get into these people. It'll be a case of whether they can escape. And they will not be able to escape. They'll get up. They'll, they'll try to get out of there. They'll be snowed in. The cars won't move. The elderly will be there. And if there's anybody on the water, they're done. Let me just, Mr. Jeff, one question. I mean, it, <clears throat> would you suggest then, okay, that plowing service, filling the potholes, whatever it might be, be done only to the section of Hammer Rock? Or, or would you suggest that it be done to the entire 181 t 
private ways. I would suggest that wherever you're going to plow by a private way, you're going to snow, you're going to plow those people in in any big storm because you're going to create a giant snowbank okay. across their road. So you're saying that the, then we should extend what you're suggesting to the entire 180 town uh, private ways. Okay. Committee. Well, let me just. Well, can I seek one more? We're all here together, and like I said, I live on a public way. I don't live on. Can I way. seek one more clarification? The the budget issue is dealing with the minor repairs and the repairs for the roads, but the snow plowing issue is just simply illegal. Is that correct? That's correct. So we'd be defying state law, and I just will remind you, just point out. The precedent has been set. Uh, okay, I'm not uh, right. I'm not a legal. I'm not a legal guy, but I don't think precedent is particularly relevant here. Legally speaking, okay? Legally speaking. And I just will remind you, there's been legal action in other towns where citizens have sued the town for plowing private ways. I have two answering machine messages on my answering machine after the last selectman's meeting, which I wasn't here for, people calling up and saying, don't plow the private ways. I don't want my tax dollars going to private and private ways. So they're gonna, there will be people that will sue. And so then we're all complaining about our, our tax dollars being spent legally to defend. Okay. I'm with you. It's against the state law to plow a private way, period. Excuse me. Apparently. Folks, this is a discussion. If you're not going to abide by the rules, then we're going to end our discussion and move on. Mrs. Joyce, you've been very, hold on. Mrs. Joyce, you've been very patient. I have a question, and maybe town council can mm -hmm. answer it. Okay, the access road that I'm trying to claim is a public access on a private road. has no houses on it. A couple of months ago, we had an exposed gas line because the riverbank has eroded so far. Approximately 200, 250 feet of exposed gas line. Kids were down there banging on it with pipes and whatever. We kept calling the gas company to get it fixed. They kept telling us that we had to wait until they got permission from the town. <laughs> Eventually, weeks and weeks and weeks later, they did. None of us were asked our permission, if it was a private road, to dig that road up to move the pipes to the inner portion of the uh, roadway. Who does the road belong to? I, 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 I guess I guess here, my Mrs. Joyce, I'm, and I'm, I apologize because I'm not trying to be. If it's if it's a private road, it's a private road. It's owned by the people who live on that road. If it's a public road accepted, then that's different. I don't know how else to say it. I, you're giving. Don't mean to interrupt. I don't know the scenario on that. But if there was some reason for them to change the piping, I I don't know. I get. I'm not sure. I mean. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Joyce uh, had posited before that that was indeed accepted. So uh, we did diligent research and came back and I provided Mr. and Mrs. Joyce with the information from the archives that indicate that the road was accepted in 1935 specifically up to the end of, is it Alden Street? Is that the name of the street? What's the street that runs? That's where the paving ends, but River yeah. Street extends to Omaha Road. Well, but what I'm saying, but the documents I provided you with was that the town specifically accepted the road up to that exact juncture. I mean, that, that's how it was laid out. But in the town street listing, it says that River Street extends from Central Ave to Old Mouth Road. It's in your own town engineer's plans. And I provided you with the legal documentation that says that it that the research that was done. But how can you have a half a pub and you accept this you can. It, it, you can. You can that's, accept 10 yeah. feet. You can. Yeah, it goes up. I know it's bizarre and I know it sounds strange. I, I still would like to know who gave permission for the gas company and the engineering studies by Merrick to be done to move the gas lines. I, I don't know. Evidently not the town. It wasn't us, I guess. But it wasn't us. Not one of us was ever notified. And maybe the, the utilities. I mean, the utility company just did it. We don't know. Um, He's never talked. Who's the, uh, Ms. Jenkins, I'll get to you one more time. Who's the, yes, this lady here. Your name and address? Ray McNeil, 9 Lincoln Street, Little Rock. Um, one question and one observation. My question is, Revenue tax money does Hummer Rock generate for the town? The second, my second um, 
observation is I <coughs> see, is it Mr. Jankowski? Jambowski. 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 Yes, Jambowski. Yes, no, Jam. After Mr. Bangor said that about at the South Vermont Civic Association meeting that we could get an abatement because of services not rendered, that is a fallacy because abatements are issued on the previous <coughs> real estate sales the year before, not on services not rendered. So basically, you people can stop services, and we have no alternative to have our taxes reduced because obviously uh, the market being what it is, and there are many real estate people here who are building me out, just because our values have diminished, the rate has gone up. So we're not seeing a significant savings. But I was curious how much Situate generates from Hummer off in Texas. Nobody can seem no. to answer that question. I saw that number a while ago, but I'll be honest, I just can't remember. But. It, <laughs> Well, that, that may be humorous. I mean, I just don't remember. It was probably two years ago. So, you know, you get to a certain age, you forget things that happened yesterday, and it might two years ago. But let me just finish. Let me finish. John mentioned it earlier. The chairman mentioned it earlier. We hear that from every sector of the town, and it's far probably legitimate. I'm not sure if I had that number at the top of my head, which I said I don't, that, that it would be any more or any less than mine it. Or second cliff, or third cliff, or first cliff. I don't know. I mean, the, the idea, the concept that Hammer Rock pays way more than any other section of town may or may not be true, if that's the point you were trying to make. May or may not be true. Just to clarify that, if I may, did you call me? <laughs> I mean, you said Joe. I just I want left, to. I left a message for all the selectmen. Did you? People okay. Camp. But my, my point being is if you people are elected and Patricia's appointed and we call with an inquiry, I think we deserve an answer. Oh. Uh, we deserve to be seen or we deserve. Let, to let me just speak happen. to that, if I may, Mr. Chairman. This board gets literally thousands of calls in the course of a year, the five of us. And I know for an absolute fact that this board answers as many calls as possible. There are times when you get 10, 15, 20 calls on one issue, and you just speak to one or two people and you ask them to pass it on. To, 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 for this board or anyone in this town to be accused of not being responsive to citizens just isn't fair. Because this board is out many times, let me just finish, four or five nights a week responding to citizens' concern. Uh, to, to, to say, even infer, that this board uh, does not uh, return calls or does not care about the residents of situated with me, Hammer Rock or, or mine it, just as an unfair knock. I really think that, you know, there are some legitimate things being brought up here tonight, and there's no question about that. It may, certainly uh, gives us and all of, all of us a, a reason to pause, but that's unfair, and I, and I, just, I just have to say it, that's all. Thank you. I what's your point, what's, though? What's, what's the your point? point? What do you? What do you? What does that mean? Let's say do it's you know? fifteen million dollars. What? Okay. What's your point? Okay. 
it's I'm it's yeah. I'm not trying to simplify it, but there's five hundred thousand dollars period to do all the roads in the town. That's it, and we allocate that the best that we can. And if your road is needy, there's I mean I've heard twelve different streets talk right now. Every one of you wants your road fixed. And there's, Al, how many requests you get a year? There's a hundred more emails that Al gets that people want the road fixed. We're doing, they're doing the best they can to fix the roads with the limited funds that we have. You say, let's do an override. You think an override's gonna pass in this town to fix roads? I, it's not a chance, not a chance. Um, let me finish. You know, so it's not whether we want to fix your road or don't want to fix your road. It is, are the resources. We want more teachers at the high school. We want an IT department. There's a lot of things that we want. Seawalls. Seawalls. I mean, Huge a new fire walls. department. There's a ton of things that the town wants, and it doesn't have the money. I'm just afraid, I'm just afraid that the next thing is going to be the street lights are going, and then the water department's going to come and say to us that this is the greatest system that, that we're having well, to do our own water maintenance, our own light service, and all that. That's just well, you're, bit by bit I know, by but that's, that's a little bit of... You know, I wanted to say. Well, thank you, Mrs. McNeil. Um, I'll get to you in one moment. Wait. This gentleman, sir. Name. I need your name. Peter Vignani. Peter Vignani. Uncle Peter. <laughs> <laughs> There's no relation, just so everybody understands. All right. I've checked my deep. I don't know. This is a private street. You keep saying private. A pure private street is something you're responsible for the poles on it, responsible for your electrical and your water. Pure private. You pay for it. I don't know. I don't, wait, excuse me. I don't own into the middle of that street. I don't pay taxes on it. I just don't buy it. I know you can spin it any way you want. I don't. Okay. This is not spinning, okay? Now, excuse me, Mr. Vignani. You've, you've given your, your statement. This is not hocus pocus. Town council has spoken, and if you, dis if you di don't believe us, fair enough. You don't believe town council, fair enough. Hire an attorney, and he or she's going to tell you what I think town council is telling you, which is what he said, what you own. You don't believe us. It's not on your deed. I respect that. But don't come in here and tell us that you think that we're selling you something. That's what town council is telling you. And we're trying to share that with you so you can at least understand. You may not accept. Excuse me. I'm not taking away anything. I'm speaking for a minute, sir. So, you know, we're trying to give you an answer. I'll be candid with you. You don't like it. I know that. And I'm not, this is not a decision that I feel is, is a great decision, you know. But we have to balance all of the inequities and, and balance all of the resources. And we have to put it to the best amount of good which happens to be the main roads, because we don't have a lot of money to do it. And yes, I'd love to have an override for it, but Mr. Vignani's being candid here. It won't pass. We've got people complaining about seawalls, probably people in your neighborhood complaining about it. We've got people complaining about the schools. That's going to be hitting the, the, the fan pretty shortly. I mean, we're trying to do the best we can with what little we have. And I know you don't like it, but that's what we are charged to do as your Board of Selectmen to try to do the best thing we can. It's not palatable. I know you don't like the answer, and, and, but I only ask that you respect it. I know you probably don't, but that's what we're trying to do. There's many, there's many people that have private ways that plow their own streets. That's a pure private way. Well, there's, there's no difference. It's either public absolutely, way, absolutely let me finish. Excuse me, Mr. Vignani. I, I don't know of two different, I mean, Jim, help me here. There's two, it's public or private. And I understand you guys have gotten a service for 60 years or whatever of it being done. I would be very disappointed too if it was stopping. But um, there's nothing we can do about it. You know, th there's only so much money. If we had the funds to fix your road, we would go fix your road. This, we don't want to have arguments and have disgruntled people. We want to make the services available to everybody. But if, just because you were get, getting something improperly for 60 years doesn't mean that you're entitled to it for the next 60. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. It's reality of what it is. 
We're not pet. Think of it this way: you got a benefit for sixty years. I mean, I don't. It's it's that's just the way it is. And there's other, like I said, there's other private ways that don't take the risk. They plow their own stuff. I don't know. It's not the town. I do know. It's not the town who owns it. No, what? Believe me, it's not me. Okay. I don't pay taxes. I'd love to own it, but I don't. Do you want to pay taxes on it? No. <laughs> not just kidding. But I do have to make exception that you said that Massachusetts law, they don't do anything. Uh, uh, private law, they do uh, In Marshfield, two places I apply to Marshfield does do private ways. They call them private or public access. My daughter lives on one of them, and they grade them. Also, I call Boston Beach or Highway. They do all private. You're missing the point. Right, we exactly. can repair your roads. We have a bylaw that says we can fix your roads. Okay. okay. If you have a road problem, you send it to DPW, and it goes on the list, and the DPW decides which gets fixed and which doesn't get fixed. That's the road. That's repair of the roads. The snow, we don't have the bylaw passed to do it. We cannot plow your roads. If we vote it at a ballot and it gets passed, then we can. We don't have to, but we can. Now, that's just the facts. So, Marshfield, I've been out and they went. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They passed the bylaw. Passed the bylaw. I mean, we don't know what Marshfield does. Did we don't Marshfield know what the utilities the company did. Okay. Uh, uh, I, you, you already asked that, Mr. Vignani, and this lady over here, you've asked four questions. Okay, it, briefly, because we're moving on. And it better be, it better not be a disparaging comment against this board. Okay. No. I just know I just know that it's the town us. doesn't own it. It's not <laughs> That's us. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. It's not us. Ms. Jenkins, you'd ask Lee. Uh, Yes. Yes. yes, there is. Absolutely. That's what we yes. want you to do. We want people to do that. We want people who have private ways or private roads to apply for the street acceptance process but and get accepted. There, there Yep. And they were approved okay. by the town, so, so. but they developed over time slowly, and all of a sudden they no longer meet the current code, but the subdivision was approved in 1950. But so it was never a public road. The subdivision as a whole, is there a way to accept the road as it was originally drawn or originally laid out without going through all the upgrade that is almost impossible? For some of these roads hit because either people have moved into the right of way, they'll never, like, for instance, Sunset Road, Stellwagon has a building in the right of way of Sunset Road, and that will never be accepted as a 50 foot path because the building's there. Look, I can't, none of, no one up here is going to promise anybody in this room about any specific street with specific circumstances, but I think I'm on pretty safe ground here that. Citizens that live on private roads and they want to get them turned into public roads are encouraged to come before the Street Acceptance Committee and the various town boards and committees and town hall offices and investigate how to go about doing it, okay? In some cases, the town may or may not have some leeway. As the conservation guy up here, you know, it is, I do, I'm very sensitive to the fact that you can't pave your roads, which is one of the criteria, and you're like, you're getting hit with a left uppercut and a right cross at the same time. I don't know if that's a workable, something that can be compromised or not. Maybe the state says it is, maybe the town says it is or isn't. Or not. I just don't know. 
But I, I will promise you, we can explore those sorts of things. Yeah. And where there's a building that's been built plum dang in the middle of the road, that clearly ain't going anywhere tomorrow. That seems like something else that you know we could look at. Some of those answers, as, as John has said many times, are going to be answers you don't want to hear. The answer is going to be no. But maybe there's cases where the answers are going to be right. And I know we'll do everything we can. I mean, I know half the people in here for various reasons. We want to plow your roads. We want to take care of the roads wherever we can legally, for example, with the snow plow thing. So yeah, there is a, there is a um, process. And we encourage people to go through it. And wherever we can find the wiggle room, we will find the wiggle room. But we can't go outside the brackets of legal acceptability. So let me, let me um, I'm going to start bringing this to a close. I'm going to let the two of you have the final two thoughts. Uh, we've been talking for an hour and a half. Um, I do want to encourage, obviously, people to contact us. I'm the chair of the uh, Street Acceptance Committee to be able to maybe start the process to discuss it. It's not going to happen overnight, but, you know, one of the thoughts are maybe the roads will be plowed, or not plowed, paved. Maybe the roads can't be paved because of the sensitivities of it, but we, if we're working together, can work with the Street Acceptance Committee to work on a street-by-street -street analysis to try to determine what it's going to take to do it. And maybe it's not going to take financial, maybe it's not going to be sound um, uh, financially to do it. Then maybe we can talk about potential options to say, you know what, maybe we can work in partnership, maybe we have to ask you to contribute money to be able to help the town, be able to get the grader, to be able to plow, and, and, or not plow, but be able to fill in the, the holes. And maybe we can work on a cost issue and f figure that out. And as far as the snow goes, maybe we can talk about, you know, you're going to maybe have to hire somebody privately or maybe hire some capacity to do this so we can get that done. Uh, these are the discussion points that I think we need to do. We talked about a liaison position. I think, you know, I'd, I'd like to think, um, I'm trying to think of the most effective, efficient way of doing it, and I think the way is through the DPW and to be able to talk to the streets on what are the issues. I think if you're interested on a street-by-street -street analysis to, to sit down and let's get together, there's an application that needs to be filled out, then to come before the Street Acceptance Committee, and uh, that, that'll be me and a few other members to talk about it. Um, that seems to be the appropriate way to go forward to try to address this issue. Um, having said that, Mr. Tosi. Actually, uh, Mr. Deming, you answered a, a number of my questions. I was going to summarize also and say, you know, exactly where were we at uh, in regard to maintenance. Um, Mr. Begani said that, yes, you will fix some of the streets if they're bad. Oh, I did not say that. I said, I said, if you have a problem with your road, tell DPW. And they and, may or may not. Right. So you're not saying no. No, Absolutely. definitely not saying no. I mean, right. not. better than right. we thought when we first walked in the door. In relation to snow plowing, forget it, right? Is that what we're saying here? Or well, there is, is there a way we can pass it? No no no, 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 no. There's a policy in place that okay. it's, 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 well, I again, I they're going to get to it. It's the fourth priority. Okay, so they're going to get to it if there's, you know, to try to do it in the midst of a storm, they're going to go down and plow, but it's going to be after the first three priorities areas are done. So at some point there will be at least one pass down the private yeah. road. Yes, right? yes. there will be. Saying. Correct. It's no, it's no different from public or private. It's, it's as the weather warrants. So um, even though school streets are like the third road, if it's snowing on a Friday night, we're going to do the other streets and all of it is conditioned on as weather conditions persist so and this policy was in place last year and and that's exactly how it played out granted it was a mild winter but that's exactly what had happened last year but the way the policy is is that the weather is going to dictate our response and what we tried to tell people last year and what we told them this will tell them this year it's not that we're not going to do it it's just the level and the timeliness that you're accustomed to receiving has changed, but that we are still going to plow your road. We're not going to plow it maybe 10 times in an hour with two inches of snow because it's fourth priority. But again, if there's a nor'easter or something, you're going to see that plow more than once. And the town trucks are on the road. They have dispatch connection for emergency vehicles, so they're going to be there. So really, I think there's a world of opportunity that we can look at for compromising, oh, but th the issue, it, everything here is valid or invalid or what, it's just who's going to pay for it. That's really what this is all about. And the town used to put $400,000 a year towards roads, in addition to the 400000 we get every other year from Chapter 90 money. 
That was cut from this year's budget. We have a town meeting November 8th that has a $300,000 deficit right now for this fiscal year. So what we have done for the last year is looked at what we're supposed to do and what we're obligated to do. We just didn't suddenly wake up one day and say, oh, let's stop you know, plowing all the private ways, the maintenance ones. So we researched it. We looked at the liabilities. For plowing, it's actually reverse liability. We're liable if we plow it without the stuff that the gentlemen have talked about. But for road acceptances, for street maintenance, we contacted over a dozen towns that don't maintain or plow private ways. But they do have policies, like <coughs> the DPW will maintain it for a fee, or there's certain routes in an area, say, that a school bus goes on that might be a private way, but there's no main public way they can do it. So I think we can get together a working group to do those kind of things. But again, at the end of the day, it's just a matter of who's paying for it. So it's just like your house value. If your garage is falling apart, you have a choice whether to fix it or not. That's your personal decision. If we're not going to maintain your road the way you're accustomed, you have a personal decision as to whether or not you go and do it yourself. But for plowing, I want to make sure the weather is always going to dictate our response, not whether you're on a private way or not, okay. based on that priority issue. And I really want to assure everyone, and Chief Stewart and Chief Judge know that. And believe me, we'll hear about it if there's any issue about emergency access. I promise you that. Okay. Well, John, can I, I make one, I one quick two-second point? Because it, it just struck me as, as Trish was saying that. You know, when you say how quickly is the plow going to get out to me if there's an emergency, during a big storm, there's a plow at Hummer Rock around the clock. So it isn't, it's not like you're sending a plow from mine it and it's got to wait till it can go the 20 minutes to get out to Hummer Rock. The, the, it's roots. broken into what, 32 <coughs> quadrants or something. And there is a plow in every quadrant for the whole storm. So if you needed a plow on your street, it's just a matter of traveling from one end of Hummer Rock, at the worst case scenario, to the other end of Hummer Rock. that not only we're going to cut the plowing, you're going to cut all the road maintenance and cut everything and just see you guys. So yeah. I think obviously we got a lot done here tonight. And I think the only thing left is if we could set up some type of liaison. I think Sean looks interested in that point right there. You can call me during any time. There you go. Anytime. We could set up a, really, we could set up a liaison with somebody here. Town. Sure, and absolutely. see what we can do and explore different options, whether it be working in conjunction. Um, some of us taking the bill, or whether you guys can pull it from somewhere else, whatever, at least yes. give us ideas on what we can do. Good. And I think, I speak for most of us, that a lot of us feel better than when we first came in here. And nope. we'd like to thank you guys for sitting here and putting up with us. I would imagine a few of you are going to probably uh, hit the bar on the way home for a quick <laughs> one. If I were you, I would. But one, again, we actually, want to say thank here. you guys. <laughs> thank you. Um, one, one thing I, I was remiss to ask earlier, and I know it was brought up by Mr. Tosi, was this, the condition of your husband. I hope he's doing well. He's Good. All right. All right, folks, thank you very much. Um, what I'd like to do right now is to take a two-minute break, and then, uh, then we'll reconvene. So, John, if we could just uh, go <laughs> off for just two minutes.
Thank you. See Thank you, you very later. much, folks. See you. Bye bye. It'll work. <laughs> okay. John, are we back on? All right, folks, again, thank you and good evening and welcome back. Good day, okay. um, I'd like to move on on our agenda here, and I'd like to move to agenda item number 11. It's a discussion, the list of special town meeting articles. And if I can, I'll turn that over to our town administrator, Tricia. Thanks. Um, this is just the first glance at the potential warrant articles. There's a noted tentative draft listing of warrant articles. The board will actually have to vote these warrant articles um, at its next meeting on October 5th. Some folks are here to discuss a little more detail on some that um, you need to have a little bit more information on before you vote in the next two weeks. So I just quickly want to go over them with you. Um, word quickly. Of, it's very, what? The word is quickly. Yeah. <laughs> um, the funding is really in flux right now, so some of these may come off because um, you'll notice a number of them say the source of funds haven't been identified. Um, obviously, the purpose of the town meeting is to close a $274,000 deficit we have in FY11 due to reduction in local receipts and um, other accounts. We have. Um, to cover some short-term costs because we um, have a vacancy in the conservation agent position and there's overlap with the person who is in the acting conservation capacity right now so it's about ninety nine hundred dollars there we need to do some transfers into contract bargaining as you know we're still bargaining for union contracts on the town side um, if funds are available, um, I'd like to split the $70,000 cost of their mandated revaluation. So if we can fund some of it now and this year and split it for next year, then we won't have to come up with $70,000 for the FY12 budget. Um, the library needs approval to go forward with the library construction grant that we approve the feasibility funds for. There's a budgetary error of $1,200 in the shellfish account. Um, the other item I just want to take a few minutes for, I know the board's familiar, we've talked about doing an energy saving contract, an ESCO contract, to have a company come in, audit all municipal and school buildings, and then the savings that they project out are um, amortized and go into capital improvements to achieve those savings. The way this program works is you have to appropriate the money for the audit, you don't spend it, and it's held in reserve and that way after they come in and they do the audit if they find for any reason that they won't achieve a 20 percent energy reduction you have to pay them the sixty thousand for the audit we feel very confident given the age and condition of our buildings that that's a very low risk thing but we still have to identify the source of funds so that's that's what we want to need to do and with the timetable project we have going on now um, it, it makes sense to do it now. The RFP will be let in a few weeks, and we need to have that set aside so we're in a position to move forward. Um, and then the other ones that I won't go into <coughs> detail are housekeeping items to reconcile expenditures and revenues in your enterprise funds for what we projected a year and a half ago to how they reconcile June 30th. Only one account, and uh, the, the, none of these accounts are in jeopardy with the exception of golf, which had a $1,600 deficit at year end. There's plenty of money in retained earnings, so we just have to borrow from Peter to pay Paul. And then um, Laura and Bill are here to talk about the stretch code and, um, and also the PV, I'm not even going to try to say it, photovoltaic uh, bylaw and um, a general bylaw to allow you more flexibility in setting the date of town meeting. We have three petition articles, uh, I'm sorry, two petition articles. They we had the required 100 certified signatures of voters. The first one by petition is to repeal the Community Preservation Act that the town adopted. And the second article, um, and I reversed them, the second article is to allow a check off on property tax bills to donate money to a school scholarship fund. So that's as brief as I could make it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions from the board? Yeah. So oh. Mr. Murray? I got, I sort of have a sort of a statement that I would like to kind of get out. We just had a lot of discussion about 
funding for roads and things like that. And Trisha just went through detail by detail how we all need to move money around to help cover and find money for a $240,000 deficit. $274,000 deficit. <coughs> and traditionally, that's what we do at special town meetings, is we restrict the town meetings to um, dealing with moving the funds around to cover the expenses that were unanticipated from the previous annual town meeting. And I'm very discouraged to see these petition articles being put onto a special town meeting. I think these are very interesting petition articles that deserve full discussion by the entire town, all the citizenry, and you're more likely to get that at a regular town meeting. And you know, maybe it is part of a strategy of the people that put these petitions in, maybe it's not. But I just think it actually reflects poorly on anybody that is trying to push putting these major petition articles on for a special town meeting. And I, I hope they, you know, I would ask that they consider holding off on these so they could be discussed by more townspeople at the regular town meeting and preserve what we've done historically at the special town meeting, which is really very important financial discussions to balance the books and keep us moving forward. And, and as I say, I just, without commenting on the merits of these, because some of them have certain aspects of merits and some of them don't, in my personal opinion, I just think it's a bad idea and I think it's just kind of cheesy for these people to try and put this on to a special town meeting. I think it's very unfortunate. I think it reflects poorly on them. And I think it's a discredit to the other townspeople that are more likely to be at the regular town meeting. I just wanted to put that out. Nothing we can do about it, but I just wanted to put that comment out there. Thank you. Um, other comments from the board? Just what is the process exactly? So we are at our next meeting. We're actually going to go in each one of these in detail and give our um, approval or disapproval. Right, you have to vote them to go in the warrant, and hopefully I'll have a source of funds identified for them. Um, but the ones that have a little more information for you to um, chew on, Laura and Bill are here tonight, and Al um, also will talk about the um, RFP for the solar array on the landfill, which I didn't mention is on the list here. So we but, should right, just... So you're going to get a warrant that you'll need to vote um, because of the posting deadline. Right, and there was a timetable in here. The, the warrant is actually closed tonight. Tonight. Um, of course, we could open it again if we wanted to. Um, you... Uh, you would have to have a special meeting to do it because it goes to the mariner for publication on the 14th. Okay. So if you wanted to do something after the 5th, you'd have to call a special meeting. After the 5th? Yep. And so do you actually, on the 5th, you actually open it and then close it again on the 5th? Or no? You, I can still add warrant articles internally. Like right. if I find out we have an unpaid bill from Mary tomorrow, it's your warrant. Right. But all bets are off theoretically after October 5th unless you meet again. Because okay. advisory has a timetable too where they have to get the book published. Great. Okay. But most of you are mostly against a publishing deadline in the Mariner. Okay. Thank you. Good. All right. Anything else, Trisha? Are we going to go over these or no? Did you want to go further? Or I think they're separate agenda items. Or, or yes. We have separate agenda items for uh, the solar and for uh, Oh, you're right. Yeah. Right, because bill. if you're not right. inclined to do this, then it's coming off the warrant, which okay. is why they're here tonight. So then we should move on to the next agenda item, 12. Right? Okay. Yes. Okay. It's getting late. We're going to get there. Uh, let's move on to agenda item number 12, which is a discussion vote. Uh, uh, refer uh, the new zoning bylaw and the solar photovoltaic photovoltaic voltaic systems um, to the planning board. So, to the planning board. Yep, that's what it says. So come on up. And we have the chairman of the board of the planning board, and also our town planner. Welcome.
take money from one of the, the big, um, I don't think it's the gas tax, I think it's the acid rain money that, that New England gets. They take that money and they give it to different communities based on whether you've done certain energy efficient things. And there are five things that we need to do, and two of them involve adopting bylaws. One of them is this, um, I'm probably not going to say it right because I'm not that versed in it, but um, solar photovoltaic, which I think just means creating um, electricity from, you know, from solar energy. Uh, one of them is that one, and the other one is the stretch code. And the solar photo <laughs> photovoltaic is a zoning bylaw which would allow these large um, solar fields, the, the fields of the solar panels that go on the ground, and according to the expert people that I talk to that uh, know more about this stuff than I do, um, a, a property owner would need a minimum of two acres to have one of these. The planning board talked about this a little bit and decided it would be good to have it in the commercial zoning district, which is the one that's um, really a little bit like an industrial district. It's around the Greenbush Tea Station and um, the Driftway, um, that area, Situate Concrete Pipe, the landfill, um, the sewer plant, that, that whole area there. And that's where these would be limited to be. Um, there are a number of features in the zoning article that are similar to the um, cell towers where if these things became obsolete, they would have to be taken down. There would be a bond that the town would keep for um, taking them down if, if that were to happen. Um, but I think the general idea is to support um, renewable <laughs> energy and to do uh, things that would you know, reduce the town's carbon footprint as a whole and, and to help people produce energy in ways that are, um, you know, not going to, you know, impact um, the climate, you know, the, the climate change any worse than it's already impacted and, and to improve it instead of, you know, making things worse in terms of producing energy. Yeah, the Green Communities Act is kind of a unique act, but in, in terms of what we're looking at in terms of the solar, what they're looking for is to come back up and allow it as a matter of right, as opposed to a special permit, which our turbine is now. So, in effect, it would be done as a matter of right and done with a site plan review. So that's really what they're looking for, and we've got a, a model bylaw that was provided by the <coughs> state uh, to come back up that addresses those, those, all of those issues. And we've kind of worked with that to start with. Um, and I think I've kind of looked at it, and it's five pages long. And, and I look at it in terms of what we've done with our cell tower and what we've done with our wind turbine. And I think that there's, there's an opportunity to reduce it in size and still maintain what the, what the state is looking for in terms of the Green Communities Act. Now, unfortunately, part of it's definition, so we need that section. Part of it has to do with the, the installation removal, so we need those sections. But I think there was a memo that I think you saw that Neil Duggan had circulated around that talked about some of the things are, are inherent in, in, in mass law without without needing to be replicated within the bylaw. So I think there's an opportunity to, to kind of scale it so that it fits in, it's in concert with the bylaws that we just recently rewrote to bring harmony to those. So I think there's an opportunity to bring the model bylaw in line with what we currently have. On it. Tony? J just so I'm clear, we're talking about the bylaw for the <clears throat> solar systems and the this initiative says that you have to have a bylaw that allows you to put these farms somewhere yeah. yes okay but you don't have to do it you just have to have a bylaw that allows bylaw. it right. yeah. and in here it says you want to put it in a commotion uh, commercially zoned area yeah but yeah. there's more than just the driftway i mean every one of our villages has this well, it's, it's actually, uh, it's not really the commercially zoned area. It's the commercial zoning district. It's like a, you know, a, a definite zoning district. So and in this bylaw, you're going to say specifically from whatever, 3A to think New Kent. Yeah. Think back to when we rewrote the bylaws. And right. in fact, what we did is we put a matrix. It said, here are the various things that you can do, and here are the districts you can do them in. In effect, what we're going to do is we're going to add this, this bylaw and say that it, it would be applicable to, to the, the commercial zoned area. Okay. Which okay. is 
It's not the business. Don't get mixed up between the business and Which commercial. is driftwood. Maybe that's what I'm... Yeah. It's it's driftwood. Which is so driftwood. So is the commercial zone yeah. only the driftway? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we're actually it's not saying... It's driftway. It's part of it. So what we're saying here, just so we can get clear, that we're really... We're really limiting, limiting it to the driftway and even making it more limited than the actual the driftway. There's only a few places on the driftway you can put it also, correct? Yeah, but if you go yeah. back to the point yeah. that Laura just made, to make this thing economic attractive, it needs it needs a, a footprint, and that footprint's available in this district. It's one of the few places that... And how, how much land do you need for this? They said about two acres. My point, I guess, being that on the driftway, I only can think of one parcel that's two acres, and that would be the old landfill. Am I correct? There's no other. So, so I guess what I'm saying is, when, if we vote this, we are saying this is where it's going to go. If you're saying it can go there, can go. it can go. Yeah, it can go. Okay. I mean, it doesn't preclude someone else from putting together two parcels or, or something to come back up and give them the area that allows them. To but it has to be on the driftway. So it to be within that district. To put a large unit yeah. in, it would have to be on, on and the driftway. And that, well, the, the district the district is encompassing between uh, <clears throat> excuse me, old driftway, yep. down uh, new driftway, all the way up to the uh, sewer treatment plant, cutting including inclusive of the um, um, the golf course because that's in the C district, and it goes back over towards Stockbridge. And that's pretty much the C district, if I'm not mistaken. But my point is that the only area that has two acres in that uh, area you just described is probably the landfill. Unless, unless private property Down owners by the windmill? wanted to do something. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Yeah, um, I think concrete pipe has more no. than two acres, yeah. and there's a couple parcels that do have yeah. more than two acres. Laura, you're going to have to speak up. I can't even hear oh, you from there. Okay. Sure. Um, I think uh, Situate Concrete Pipe has two acres, and there's a couple of other uh, parcels. Yeah. There's certainly okay. a lot of public land that's more than two acres that would work. Thank you, Tony. I can't reach it. Private uh, land. Over and above. You know, private yeah, I think land. Situate Concrete Pipe is the only private yeah, land. Yeah, the pipe. It's all taken up by pipe, though. There isn't yeah. any yeah. extra space. Mr. Banger. Yes. Uh, if I can make a clarifying point, and, and perhaps Mr. Rocker will correct me if I'm wrong. As of today, uh, in actually, in actuality, in the situation, uh, we have by right the ability to put up solar arrays um, on residential areas, you know, in my backyard, your backyard. It's a matter of right. Also, within the commercial zone, it's, it's a matter of right where a solar array can be erected of you know, whatever size. Um, the purpose of this bylaw is to enable us to get in the running for the Green Communities Act. It isn't to create or designate or narrow down or expand. It's, <coughs> if we have this in place, it's one more element needed to be in the green communities community and therefore have access to grants. So it's it's um, sure. a process towards an end, which is uh, getting grants. Okay. Well, Think of it as trivia I'm, pursuit. Is correct, Mr. Uh, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Think of it as trivia pursuit. <coughs> this is a piece of pie that we need to, to right. satisfy the green community. Uh, Al brings up a good point. Would that restrict a homeowner from putting a smaller panel on top of his house? No, it, it has no. nothing to do with, with a small, um, the residential. But this is only for fields? This or is large. only for the big fields, and um, I don't think this is something that you'd ever find. Large in scale, area. okay. Yeah. What, about, what about for public use? Like if we wanted to put them on the high school or some of our buildings, that wouldn't preclude us at all? Absolutely not. This, okay, just to clarify. You know, roof-mounted systems would, or this is dealing strictly with, with large, if you, if you see them in California in a lot of areas where they have Brockton large fields. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. And these are the ones that are on the ground. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, I think that the way the landfill one worked was that Neil saw that as an accessory to the, the town's, you know, whatever the town um, use was on that property. And the same thing would probably be the way he would look at one at the high school or a small one that someone would do on their house. It's okay. just an accessory use. But this is a big one where you could be selling energy back to the grid. The grid. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Other questions from the board? Nope. All right. Good. So that's the so I guess solar so photovoltaic. So procedurally, I think we, back. for the planning board to proceed with, with the whole, holding the public hearings and proceeding with, with the bylaw, well, yep. I guess what we need is a vote that re refers okay. the matter to us. Okay. Is there have to go on the warrants? It is, but they have 
a timetable that they need to do to actually write the bylaw. Review. So when you vote, you start a clock oh, okay. for them. So you want a motion from the board um, to, to accept or to turn turn over. I don't know how to word it, but I'm saying to accept the Green Communities Ground Mounted Solar Photovoltaic Installation Bylaws to be addressed by the Planning Board or referred. Yeah. So moved. I, I can't make the motion. Somebody has to so say So moved. It. Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. All in f uh, any discussion, any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Next one. For the next one, I just want to have Laura chat briefly stretch. about the stretch code and the workshop we had last week, and I know Mr. Uh, Harris attended as well. I was there. You were? I was in the back. Two minutes. I was there. I was there. I was, Mr. Moore. I was there. I was home stretching. I read the literature. I wasn't there. I was there for a, a portion of it. <laughs> 40 minutes. Anyway. Any event, please address the stretch code. That's, um, that's part of the Green Communities requirements and uh, I know that if Neil were here I think he, he would have some positive things to say about it um, it adds some um, energy efficiency to what's going to be required is uh, to the um, energy efficiency that's going to be required by the new building code it does go a little bit beyond that but apparently if there are um, if you can get your home counted as an energy star home then you get rebates that are going to cover the cost of the um, the HERS rating which is the, the performance test to make sure that you know you've not got air you know leaking out where you shouldn't have it my understanding is that what they're trying to do from the state is to mandate uh, to builders an incentive to basically make the home energy efficient and in doing so while there may be an additional cost initially, which the builder ultimately will probably pass on to the consumer or the purchaser, the purchaser over the course of time will reap the benefit based on the fact that it's energy efficient, lower their costs, whether it's from insulation to windows to fuel efficiency. And the code is not necessarily mandate mandating that everything's done, but whenever you get into a section of a house, you have to make that portion compliant, exterior walls. New so over the course, and new houses too. No, new, no, can I, I'm sorry to jump. <coughs> new construction, a new addition, doesn't apply to the older part of the house. Correct. Right. In other words, so if you add on to your house, that new section will have to be compliant. So, um, and, and obviously the goal here is to make it efficient for the co consumer and the homeowner. And while there may be initial cost up front, they'll reap it in the, at the, uh, the end. I mean, is that a good summation? Yes. Okay. Do we need a motion? Again? No, I just want to know if you're against it. So we, but, um, Sounds good. I'm I in favor of it. the only thought would be the build, how are builders going to feel? If if, for, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I know what you, where you're going to go with it. And I think Neil said at first the builders were quite upset with it. And at that meeting, Steve Bajorklin, Mark Winchester, uh, there, there were a handful of builders Tim there. Fitzgerald. Thank you. And as they heard it for the second time, you know, I don't. I think they were for it. I think. And an interesting point was that the group had asked, and if any of these builders have built an energy star rated home, and they hadn't. And I think Tim said that some one builder in Norwell had. That's all he does. He gets more money for his homes and so forth. But I think Neil summed it up best the way. You know, and I, I don't know all the acronyms for it, but Neil basically said the building codes are going to be going in this direction. They're going to get stricter and stricter and stricter. Neil said if we adopt this policy now, it's something, and we can stand to gain grant money and be ahead of the curve. Plus the builders, and Sean's exactly right, if we do this now, we in line for eight point one million next year in grants and the people who need to comply with it will be better positioned because the whole state needs to do this in three years. This is going to be in the code in three years. She said three years. And she this yeah. is so it's coming. It's just if we do it this much sooner we get to apply for these grants. And we thought about trying to get this together for our annual town meeting and we decided to wait because we wanted to take time to look at the stretch code and forty one more communities became passed a stretch code at their annual town meetings in the spring. So now there's that more m many and applying for this grant money. So so it's here in three years or it's here now and we can access some real good money for the town, we think. Who, who gets the grant money? The town does to do energy efficient. Because um, if, if you pass the bylaw, 
then you get you just get money to do what you want with? No, we have to apply for them. But the town buildings, the our, town, our own buildings, right. oh, will get the for benefit. Town buildings. Yeah. I get so it. we can improve and windows and insulation. And it's meant to dovetail with this whole thing that I, is another right. warrant article for the audit. Okay. They're sort of, you know, sort of going down this path together. But, Tricia, remember one of the people had given a few towns, for examples, and what it was translating, Tony, into about, what, 150000 per town, if I'm not mistaken. And it depended on many things. They couldn't even explain it, but, you know, how wealthy a town was, how big a city was, and, and so forth. Some towns got more. And you can use that money for, like, to hire consultants to do your audits and stuff like that, right? I don't. I don't well, know. What we want to use it is to help when the audit for the ESCO comes right. and it shows how we can save money, we have that additional money to supplement and lay over. Yeah. And there's a lot of um, competition in this area now. Um, Hanover. This nearest Hanover is already on board. Yeah. yeah Kingston. Kingston's oh, passed right. it. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. Anything else that you want to address on the subject to the board? No, no, I think that's it. Any other questions? Do we have to put a motion on this motion. No? Right. Laura, thank you, and thank you for staying with us this late. And then, John, quickly, just for Al to speak briefly about the solar thing. I was just going to say, Al, could you come up here and talk about the solar energy? This actually has nothing to do with the previous discussion about solar bylaws. <laughs> Conveniently is, nothing. If you remember, last spring you uh, asked the DPW to move forward and look into, with the Energy Committee, uh, the feasibility of a solar array on the landfill. Um, in parallel with that, what other uses are there for the top of the landfill? Could it be used for recreational uses? And that, that both of those are proceeding on a parallel path. We initiated a uh, um, request for proposals in late July. Uh, we received those a week ago Monday. Uh, we received nine very solid proposals from very large companies and very innovative companies uh, on both sides. The um, what we need to do in order to move forward is make sure that town meeting agrees to lease the landfill for up to 20 years for this purpose. This is the same request we had of the town meeting when we were going to lease the area next to the sewer plant for wind turbine. Um, a solar field is much less controversial than a wind turbine in that you don't see it, it's, you know, it just sits there and, and listens to the sun and creates electricity. The proposals we've gotten are, are very exciting. Uh, they will essentially supply 30% of the municipal power, 30% of the power that we consume as a town um, at less than half the price that we're paying today. Um, the proposals range in value from $150,000 to $250,000 a year in savings uh, over for 20 years. So per year for 20 years? 120, 150 for 20 years, yeah. So, uh, or 200 for 20 years, you know. Yeah. They're, they're three to three to five million dollars uh, for the town. Uh, and the savings could then be used to do things such as buy land for recreational purposes that is much more easy to develop, okay? The, uh, what we need to have on the town meeting warrant is uh, the request for the town meeting to agree permission to lease the landfill surface for the purpose of installing a solar array, say for up to 25 years. The action does not bind the town to the project because that still has to go through a series of votes. Uh, the Energy Committee has to sort it out. They have to come to you, uh, s request your permission to proceed to the next step, and then so on and so forth. In the end, you'll sign the contracts if we decide to go that way. But it does enable, if we don't do this, we will, we're dead in the water and we, we can't go after this at all. Questions? Just one question, quick question. Uh, would putting the solar uh, panels up there uh, prohibit any other use for the top of the landfill? Generally, y uh, yes, I would say that. It would, uh, the, the proposals included a recreational walking trails and yeah. a picnic area up there yeah. uh, and required that those be built in. Uh, the proposals coming back in, in include, at the prices I was talking about, the entire top of the field. Um, if we were to ask them to come back and do half of it, we could do that. But we've done our investigation on the feasibility of putting ball fields up there, and we are, uh, we are many hundreds of thousands of dollars away from being able to do that because of the fact that the uh, field has only been closed 10 years. It's still settling. It's still producing gas. Uh, and I, I'll give you the report on that at a subsequent meeting. But you're not yeah. making, you're not taking a binding action today on this. You're okay. simply enabling it. Yeah, I'd like to just see, 
I'd like to see that just yeah. because there's well, so much interest. I think in it would be feasible to say that if we generate this savings, that savings can then use, be used to fund areas more suitable for ball fields than on top of the closed uh, landfill. Mr. Fignani? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I understand it's not binding, but it seems like we're taking every single step possible to, to make this that, and we haven't Absolutely. decided if that's what we want to do with that land Absolutely. yet. Absolutely. So that's, um, you know, I, I'm in favor of doing that, but knowing that we haven't decided if that's what we're going to do. We Correct. discussed this months ago where we said, what if we do a quarter of it? Or what if right. we do, how many acres are up there? 17. Seven, 17 acres of solar panels. And but did I hear, I must not have heard, said two. that would only be using two? No, no that's 15, a different. 15, 15 of it. That's for the bylaw. No, no the bylaw oh, was, the was bylaw. two acres, no, two acres two minimal. Acres yeah, right. okay. So it's, All uh, right, so you're looking for us to just vote on putting this, or are you or not? It's just information. Right okay. So what you want us to do is put an article on the warrant that says the town will allow mm -hmm. us to lease this property if we want to. Or take any other appropriate action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Al. Thanks. Well, that, that uh, completes our discussion with respect to agenda item uh, number 12. So moving on to agenda item number 13, it's a vote to close the special town meeting warrant. My motion? Please. Move the board select and vote to close the November 8, 2010 special town meeting warrant at 9.56 p.m. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, moving on to the next agenda item, which actually is 14. Uh, it is a discussion, vote, liquor license hearing, a transfer of license, Jamie's Pub, from North Situate. And it's my understanding that um, they are withdrawing their application, correct, Kim? Without prejudice. Without prejudice. All right. So is there a, a uh, motion? motion? Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote <coughs> to accept the request of Ralph and Sandra Constantine to withdraw without prejudice the application to transfer the common vehicular's all kinds of alcoholic beverages licenses held by Pebble Beach Inc. DBA Gannett Grill Inc. to Jamie's of Situate Inc. DBA Jamie Pub uh, 358 to 360 Gannett Road Situate Mass. Is there a second? Se second for discussion. Yes. Seconded by Mr. Harrison. Discussion. Is it okay? Yeah. Good. Do you want to hear from let me, Mr. Uh, Mr. I, as I said last time, we we discussed this. Uh, I have a conflict with. That. I apologize, I, if Mr. This is going to be a long discussion. I'll step down. If it's not going to be a long discussion, I'll sit up here. Okay. Well, they're withdrawing, right? They're, they're, they're withdrawing, so it shouldn't be a long discussion. Attorney Leonard, yes, we're in the process of. Yes. What's the? Uh, Good evening, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman uh, William Leonard. I represent Linda Constantine and. Uh, Originally, I was before the board here uh, on August 31st in opposition to this uh, to this transfer. And uh, the reason I uh, I'm in opposition to the transfer is because the uh, um, I don't want to get into the opposition uh, reason. Okay, I mean it's almost 10 o'clock, right. and you know what? The question is, we're 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 voting right now to to um, basically with, withdraw from it. Okay, okay. Or they're withdrawing. So uh, I don't what's the question? Can, I don't think they can withdraw, and I'll tell you why. Um, I have. Uh, I gave you all a, uh, a memorandum, uh, and uh, I had some attachments to it. One of them is being the RESPA statement. And according to the RESPA statement, um, Mr. Leonard, I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't want to get into that discussion. You know, I really it's, don't. It's and I, I just I'm you're you're honest. objecting. What your basis for objecting for the applicant to withdraw is what? My basis is that uh, that everything was transferred to Jamie's Pub Inc. of uh, of Situate. That's the corporation now. They want to continue to operate under the old license, which was to Pebble Beach, Inc. I'm objecting because they can't, because Pebble Beach, for all intents and purposes, doesn't exist anymore. Okay. And, and all I'm saying right now is that's a legal matter that can be addressed in a private setting, in a court. They initially came before us. There was an objection by your client. Now they're withdrawing, and now you're objecting to them withdrawing. And, and I think at this point, you know, they're withdrawing. We're not going forward with the hearing, and those issues that you raise, while probably pertinent, are better suited for a different area. Well, the, uh, the, the, the license is now in the, um, um, the holder of the license now oh, is uh, G, uh, the old one, Pebble Beach, Inc. And uh, are they saying they're going to continue under Pebble Beach, Inc.? 
do they have a right to, to uh, if my, if my understanding, the license that was issued, which was issued in the beginning of the year, I'm not sure if it was December of last year or January, it's still in effect until it expires, and it expires at the end of December of this year, and then somebody's got to apply for a new license. And that issue can be dealt with the parties in a private setting. If, uh, if that's the case, then I'll be back before you at the end of the year. Uh, I, I expect that. <laughs> I expect somebody to be meeting for us. But you know, having I, said that, I, I just think that at this point they're withdrawing. We're voting on them. their withdrawal. Okay. Thank um, you. All right. Uh, there's a first. Who, for, who, who first I'm nominated? Mr. Vignani, you seconded. Okay, good. I just want to make sure Mr. Norton. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous 4-0. Uh, the a selectman vote to close the liquor license hearing at... 10 p.m. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Uh, let's move on to uh, 16, which is the re, I guess you could say, the vote to reestablish the Economic Development Committee. Mr. Monger, are you here for that? I am. And Mr. Limbacher, both from the Planning Board. Good to see you. Nice to see you too. Now, I know that the planning board and the committee members have uh, put together a charge. I know that um, our town administrator has made some comments on those charges. And um, are, where are we at with that? Are those uh, acceptable? And we, we've reviewed them. We haven't met as a planning board to discuss uh, Trisha's comments. But okay. I can tell you, and Bill and I have looked through them and in general think they're, they're great comments. Okay. And. Uh, you know, I think it's uh, up to the selectmen, you know, what you want to do with this. I think um, we'd like to see it reestablished and, and actually be able to go out and start soliciting um, applications for positions and sort of get the ball rolling. Um, we'd love if you voted on uh, accepting the charge tonight. Um, certainly within your power to do that. Um, perhaps with Trisha's amendments to it or whatever other ones you okay. see fit. Good. Questions from the board? So this is the same charge that we looked at, and we discussed, um, you know, the selectmen's role in it and appointing members and that sort of stuff. Yes. Those haven't been no adjustments have been made. No. <clears throat> so can we vote to establish the committee and just revisit the charge once the edits get made? Is that yes? Yes. I'd like to do that. Certainly do that. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So right. move that Second. the board of selectmen <laughs> vote to reestablish the economic committee. Um, and we'll review the um, charge as it is completed. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Uh, um, discussion? Questions from the audience? I'm saying none. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the logistics are we now have a committee. Yep. We will come back up, revamp the charge. Then we'll start it. it to you guys, and then <coughs> off we go. Yep. I, I, if I could suggest, Bill, I'm sure you probably thought of this. Give us the charge that you come up with prior to the meeting, so we won't be seeing it here for the first time. So. Did you see things at the last minute? No. <laughs> I There's can't read that fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's clearly the way we'll do it. I apologize for keeping you this late. If I'd known it was going to be this quick, I would have put you on no before 7.30. We, so. we have a meeting on uh, Thursday, so we can uh, right. do that. Thank and, you. Uh, revise the memo and get it back to you uh, very quickly so I appreciate that again my apologies I'll, I'll make sure that when we get it back we'll have you at the beginning of the agenda all right great Sounds thank good. you thank you very much thank you thanks okay moving on to agenda item number 17 the appointment recreation commission <coughs> associate position move the board select and vote to appoint David Smith as associate member of the recognition second second by mr. Vignani discussion saying none all in favor aye. aye I think that was unanimous right yes good uh, moving on to number 18, other business. I'll start. Uh, I don't have any. <laughs> Next. Uh, just very quickly, I think uh, congratulations and thanks should be given to the uh, Gates PTO and the Shore Organization for sponsoring a very uh, meaningful uh, presentation last night in the name of the President. Rachel's Challenge. Rachel, Rachel's Challenge, thank you. Uh, dealing with a, a, a young lady who lost a life in, in, at the Columbine shootings. And everyone I talked to who attended that uh, showing were very moved and, and, and thought it was a great idea. So I think our thanks should go out to the, as I said, the PTO at Gates in short for funding it. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Harris? Nope, not tonight. Mr. Vignani? 
Um, I just have one quick thing, and I don't know what, what the proper procedure this is. Um, months ago, we talked about um, looking into uh, sidewalks at different locations in, in um, town. And I know there was a list made at one point in time that kind of prioritized them. I've been getting some phone calls about uh, the Stockbridge Road area, and they're wondering what the status of that is. And I know that there's money to be appropriated, and I'm not trying to appropriate it now, but I know that you have to do some engineering first to see if it's feasible. What would be the process to get the engineering work done so that we can see if actually work in that area is what we want to use those funds for? Um. May is that I? just something that we can ask Al to pursue? I mean, I, I think it's relatively short money. Oh, I didn't know you were here. I'm sorry, you switched seats on me. You're hopping around here, Al. We have remaining in your streetscapes account funds, uh, which you can elect to allocate to things related to streetscapes, sidewalks being one of those. You also have at your disposal a a study that was done to priorize areas that would close gaps where there are a lot of people making movements and their sidewalks missing. Stockbridge Road qualifies as one of those important gaps to fill. Uh, there are other gaps that we've already filled. We've filled the, Hol the uh, Henry Turner Bailey gap. We're filling the Holland Street gap with some state funds. Uh, you then can, I think, elect among you that you want to allocate some of those funds to uh, do an engineering study to complete the uh, that, that sidewalk study, and then you'll know where, where you want to go forward. So I think you just decide as a board how you want to apply that money, and you'll, so, you'll have more than enough to cover the uh, engineering and perhaps even construction. Maybe we should put this on as a uh, agenda item. How about that? An upcoming <laughs> agenda, Kim? I, I don't. I know October fifth is probably packed. Uh, would a meeting in October be possible? Or um, okay? Is it? I mean, that's a quick one, isn't it? Should or no. be. Or no, maybe. I, I'm not. I know October fifth is pretty packed. I so think. October 19th? Would the nineteenth be? Is that good? Yeah. Good. Thanks. That'll give you time, Al. Mr. Chairman, can I jump in on other yes. business again? Uh, Kim sent out an email tonight, I believe, to all the board regarding the sister city uh, festivities in the middle of uh, October, and there are certain things that are going on. Meeting the mayor, the dignitaries from the city in France that. that wishes to be a sister city. And I would ask the board to take a look at that schedule and see if there's anything that would fit in with your time schedule uh, so you could meet these people and maybe even have dinner some night, whatever the case might be. So if you'll just read that memo when you get it, that email, excuse me, uh, and get back to Kim where, you, where and when you might be available. Thank you. Good. Mr. Murray. Uh, yeah, the only thing I have for other business is that uh, I attended, and so, as did Tricia, the library, trustees library gala up at the Barker Tavern about 10 days ago now, I think it was. And it was just a very lovely affair, and it was nice to see attendance was up again this year, so I think they had about 190 people respond. Wow. And uh, they do a great job with it, and people from all walks of uh, life around town were there, and it was just really a nice time. John, I just have one other thought, and maybe you can help me with this. I believe this Saturday or Sunday is the Marina Pickup Day, where yeah. um, where they're looking for volunteers mine, to go down. Mine at mine 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 Beach. Mine yeah, at Beach. Mine at Beach. The blast went out today. Yeah. Right. So yeah. if anyone's up still watching this. Um, <laughs> Tom, kids can get um, credits from the school, students. I believe service, so. Right? I believe it counts as community service. So you want to give them credit right now? No, but I'm just saying that's one way of getting students yeah. to do it. So mine at Beach, um, cleanup day, I think it's Sunday. I thought it was Saturday. Yes. Maybe it's Sunday. It Sunday? No, it's Sunday. Maybe we can post it on the website. School day. Good. All right. It's okay. on there now. It went up today. Great. All right, moving on to um, correspondence. Agenda item 19. Seeing that there are none, I'd like to move on to agenda item number 20, which is acceptance of minutes. Move minutes. the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the minutes of April 21st, 2009. Second. Seconded by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's a 4-0 vote. Mr. Harris is abstaining. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept minutes of May 5th, 2009. Second. Seconded by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That completes Aye. the minutes. Um, which brings us to agenda item 21. Folks, 
We're going into executive session, and as I've said in the past, this is a discussion that we could not have in the public as it relates to um, sensitive matters re related to negotiations, labor negotiations. So uh, at this point, I'd like to go into executive session. If we can have a roll call. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Folks, good night. We'll see you on the October 5th. Thank you, John.